old football ground referee Anthony Taylor all in black with the rain tumbling down all around him gives it a long loud blast on the whistle to try and get the game started but three Newcastle players uh, in their strident green shirts the change kit this afternoon had set off too early so we're going to do that again we've done it again and we are underway our second Premier League commentary of the afternoon on five live sport Wolves against Newcastle. Newcastle with an early attack down the right. Ball into the penalty area from Bruno Gimmerreich first time. Mateusz Cunha controls the clearance. He's fouled by Gimmerreich. That'll be a free kick to Wolves. Straight away, Paul Robinson. You and I both had Wolves written down as a back three of Max Kilman, Craig Dawson and Totti Gomez. It looks slightly different this afternoon the way they've started. He does. It looks like Gary O'Neill's changed it up to match his opposite number. Eddie Howe, he's playing with a back four. Totti Gomez has dropped in at left back. Semedo in at right back. Neto on the right-hand side and Huang on the left-hand side to make a 4-3-3. Oh, Huang chasing a ball over the top. There was a foul there, though, on Jamal the Cells as Huang jumped for it. He complains about the referee's decision, but he's certainly not going to change his mind. So that will be a free kick for Newcastle just outside their penalty area. In terms of the Premier League table this evening and where these two stand, two teams in excellent form uh, in terms of recent Premier League games. Wolves unbeaten in the last four. Newcastle with four wins and a draw in the last five. Wolves start in 13th, win today, and they could go 10th uh, above Crystal Palace, Chelsea and Brentford. Newcastle starting in sixth spot. They could go above Aston Villa on goal difference with a win. It would take them to 19 points and stick them in one behind Liverpool. Defending for Newcastle to do, though. Neto in on the right-hand side. Second touch of the ball, slightly overran it, which allowed Nick Pope to come off his line and grab it for Newcastle. Paul Robinson. He was quick there, Neto, wasn't he? He showed his pace on that right-hand side, playing slightly wider than we're used to seeing him so far this season. Exposed Lascelles and Shaw on that right-hand side. Lascelles couldn't touch him. Got past him in his first, first warning shot for Newcastle got into the box so one change for Newcastle from the defeat against Borussia Dortmund on Wednesday night Callum Wilson starts up front in place of the injured Alexander Isak back to back Premier League starts for Wilson a fourth Premier League start of the season he'll be absolutely chomping at the bit and for Wolves two changes from the win at Bournemouth Nelson Semedo and Mario Lamina both return from suspension Matt Doherty and Joao Gomez uh, are the two players to drop to the bench I'll give you the full lineups in just a second Almiron busting a gut to chase a ball down the right hand side Totti follows him gets some studs on it and knocks it out for a throw in to Newcastle on the right you've been quite struck by the atmosphere haven't you Paul in here they do it well pretty much really don't they? well don't they have been here a couple of times and they do it really well I mean any any ground under lights is it's, it's, I always think there's a better atmosphere anyway but especially here at Molyneux under the lights before the game with the pyrotechnics and the music they, they really do it well yeah no pre, pre-match build up is, is excellent here and they certainly crank the, uh, the sound system up to the max throw in from Trippier is a delicate one onto the boot of Almiron gives it back to him Ball into Longstaff, wide to Almiron. Trippi is in perfect position behind him to get this crossing from the right. Flicked on by Gordon at the near post. Wilson will chase that and keep the ball in play. Down by the byline, away to our right. Newcastle in these green shirts, white shorts and green socks. Playing from left to right in the first half uh, towards the Sir Jack Hayward stand which is packed with Wolves fans, slightly unusually at Molyneux, and we were remarking on this before kick-off, the away fans are stretched out along one side of the ground, so the opposite side to us is the Steve Bull stand, it's a two-tier stand, and the top half, uh, there's the kind of bigger section of that stand, is all Wolves fans, and then the thinner lower tier beneath, all those in the black and white stripes in Newcastle. And they've travelled in the numbers again, haven't they? Oh. They've got a lot of football to watch this year, some Champions League nights, a lot of Premier League fixtures as well, but they always travel well, Newcastle. They've got a great support, a great fan base, and they're getting the rewards for a few years without some top-flight football and champion, Champions League football. I mean, it was another fantastic occasion midweek at St James's. The result wasn't there, but the atmosphere and the fan base certainly was. Jose Sarr all in pink, clears for Wolves right-footed. Trippier lets it drift over his head, then runs behind to collect it. He's been muscled off it by Eight Nuri, fouled Eight Nuri, but Cunha picks up the running for Wolves down the left. Almiron chases him. Cunha stumbles, wants a free kick, but the throw-in goes to Newcastle. Let's give you the two teams then. Jose Sarr in goal for Wolves, as Paul has explained. Back four, Semedo right back, Totti left back, Kilman and Dawson, the two centre-backs. That has pushed Eight Nuri further on. Uh, down the left-hand side. So Neto wide on the right, eight Nuri on the left, Lamina and Bubakar Traore as the central midfielders. Here come Wolves again, edge of the box, and that was Neto trying to feed Huang, and Wolves win their first corner of the evening. So the front two 
are Huang and Mateus Cunha, uh, the Brazilian. Started well, Wolves, coming off the back of a four-game unbeaten run. Newcastle, for me, this is their first real test of the season. Yes, they've had the indifferent start, they've picked that up, they've got the results. They had that fantastic win away that we know about at Sheffield United 8-0, but they've struggled away from home. They've won one away in all competitions. And coming here today off the back of a disappointing Champions League game in midweek, with injuries, with suspensions, it's a real test for them tonight at Newcastle. Corner for Newcastle to defend, low one from Neto into the near post, didn't quite get enough on that. It's volleyed away by Almiron and goes behind for another corner to Wolves. Ball coming towards Neto, he didn't see it, being lobbed at him from the side of the pitch, so it's gone bouncing past him. Great night for football, isn't it? Oh, lovely. You sat here, the rain's pouring down, no wind, not a breath of wind. Probably not a great night for spectators sat without cover, <laughs> but it's a great night to play. Neto waiting to take the corner uh, from the left. Right arm raised in the air. Bit more purchase on this one. Into the near post. Header not clear. Totti tries to turn and shoot. The ball's loose inside the box. Laid back. Eight Nuri scuffs it badly with his right foot. Leans back and puts it miles wide and miles too high. And that'll be a Newcastle goal kick. So Wolves nil, Newcastle nil. Six minutes in. The rain is getting ever heavier. Paul had the old weather app out before the game. You said it was coming and it's indeed arrived. Nick Pope in goal. Uh, Kieran Trippier, Jamal Lascelles making a seventh consecutive start in all competitions with Sven Botman, one of those out injured. Fabian Scher and Dan Byrne make up the back four. Sean Longstaff, Bruno Gimmerreich and Joa Linton with Callum Wilson uh, through the middle. Anthony Gordon and Miguel Almiron, uh, his, his partners as it were, playing left uh, and right of him. Newcastle have a throw uh, in an attacking position on the left. They've played back into their own half. Lascelles across to Trippier. Trippier looks up and slides a pass through the middle. Good first touch from Joa Linton. Longstaff makes the run, collects it on the edge of the box. Couple of touches, shoots across goal and only just misses. That went through the legs of Craig Dawson. It left Jose Sar unsighted. That wasn't far away. That was so close. We were right behind that. Joe Linton finds himself in acres of space in the middle of the park. Kieran Trippier fires the ball into him. It's a great first touch. And Longstaff, again, he's in so much space on this right-hand side. Nobody goes to close him down. Gets into the box, 12 yards out on the angle. Fires it just wide of Jose Sars far post. He started scoring goals again for Newcastle this season. Sean Longstaff, I saw him get one in the 8-0 win uh, at Bramall Lane. Two in the Premier League. One of those at Bournemouth last weekend, one in the Champions League as well. Neto with a clever turn on the halfway line. Couldn't quite then get onto the ball that had been played forward for him. Nick Pope under pressure, pokes it with his right foot to Trippier. Two Wolves players in the old golden black closing in. Trippier's clearance headed forward by Totti. Huang is onside. Trippier leans into him. Huang gets past him. Sliding challenge from Lascelles. And Wolves win another corner, nil-nil. Brilliant from Huang and Cunha. High pressing. Wolves have set off on the front foot pressing Newcastle under pressure there's times where you want to play from your goalkeeper when you want to play from your fullbacks your centre halves but there's times as a goalkeeper you have to make a decision it's not on you have to go longer and goalkeepers we're finding now are finding more and more trouble by trying to play out and play the way managers want to and Nick Pope just put his team under pressure by doing so so speaks a former England goalkeeper uh, in Paul Robinson with us on 5 Live and BBC Sounds Live at Molyneux Neto's corner in from the left punch from Pope clear volleyed by Traore Cleared away by Lascelles. He then tries to get the Newcastle defence pushing up as high as they can. And that'll go out for a Wolves throw on the right-hand side. We've seen some and heard about some fabulous goals scored uh, across the continent in the world of football today. So Jude Bellingham's got two for Real Madrid today at the new Camp. They were 1-0 down and beat Barcelona by two goals to one. Harry Kane has scored from inside his own half as part of a hat-trick in a Bayern Munich 8-0 win against Darmstadt. Eddie and Ketty has got a hat trick, and I think Billings' winner for Bournemouth for their first win of the season came from about 40 yards out as well. <laughs> well I've seen Bellingham's goals. I mean, if you get a chance tonight, please go onto the iPlayer, go onto the, uh, the the app and watch Bellingham's goals. I mean, it's, he's got a cheat code for this game at the moment, hasn't he? <laughs> Totti does well for Wolves. They're trying to play out from the back. Trippier races in to try and nick it off the toe of eight Nuri. He appeals for the throw in, and the assistant referee who's standing immediately to his right. And that's Gary Bezik agrees and gives the throw in to Newcastle. Thrown to the feet of Almiron. Nine minutes in. Rugby Union World Cup final with Martin Johnson, former World Cup winning captain for England, part of the commentary team tonight. On the way after this, we'll hand over to Sonia McLaughlin on the full-time whistle tonight. And the game kicks off at 8 o'clock. That is New Zealand against South Africa. Here's Trippier inside his own half. Threads a pass. 
in between the Wolves players. Wilson comes to collect, lays it back to Trippier. He lofts one down the right. Longstaff chases. Dawson's across. Hooks it away with his left foot. Traore gets it caught up between his feet. Wilson's at him. Traore wins it back. Clever turn by Eight Nuri. Spin on the ball. The old roulette spin. Then knocks it past the cells. Picks it up the other side. Cut back to Huang, who couldn't control it on the edge of the box. Had he been able to do so, was possibly in a really good shooting position. Joe Linton fouled on the edge of the box. The referee plays advantage. Advantage over. Here come Wolves again. And that is pretty woeful from Traore. Attempt from 30 yards out. Drags it well wide. Goal kick for Newcastle. That's a fantastic chance for Wolves, it really is. Eight hey, Nori down this left-hand side. He does wonders. He gets around Kieran Trippier. His footwork is excellent. He gets the ball out of his feet and then he pushes it past the cells, goes at pace and he squares it across the box, falls at Huang's feet. He just takes his eye off the ball. Just one lapse of concentration. He needed a touch and a strike on goal. That was a real opportunity for Wolves. He's another one who's been in great goal-scoring form for Wolves so far this season. He's scored in his last five home league games for the club. Last player to manage six for Wolves in the top flight in terms of home league games in a row. John Richards back in 1973. Callum Wilson goes charging into a challenge on Craig Dawson, brings him down. That's a free kick for Wolves just outside their own penalty area. Looks sharp, Callum Wilson, doesn't he? He touched on the, the Newcastle side. He's the only change that started midweek in the Champions League game. This is a test for Eddie Howe's squad. You know, he's, we, we know that he's missing a few players and it's a test for Callum Wilson. Can he keep himself fit? We know that Isaac's going to be out for a while. This is Callum Wilson's opportunity. He's got his goals this season so far. You look at his record, five Premier League goals, one every 66 minutes at the moment. And that's the best of any player that's played more than 90 minutes. So his record is there. It's just his fitness. Can he stay fit? Yeah, Eddie Howe needs him as well. Big games coming in November for Newcastle. Away to Manchester United on Wednesday night in the League Cup at home to Arsenal next Saturday. Saturday, Wednesday night's game. Commentary will start on Radio 5 Sports Extra and we'll then move to 5 Live. It's a later kickoff in terms of the League Cup football on Wednesday night. We've got full commentary of Arsenal Newcastle next week in this slot at 5.30. Then Newcastle go to Dortmund and then away to Bournemouth before the next international break. 12 minutes in, it's Wolves nil, Newcastle nil. Wolves have started well here, three corners uh, in the game. Newcastle are chasing them at the moment. Totti in the left back position. Joe Linton tries to intercept. Good strength from Lamina and skill. And then accidentally caught round the back of the head by Bruno Gimmerreich. That is going to be a good physical tussle in central midfield. Wolves get the free kick. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see you touch on the fixtures there, Ali. What Eddie Howe does with the Carabao Cup and how seriously he takes that. Because you look, you, you spoke quite openly and, and worked very well on BBC World Service earlier about the, the amount of time that it is that Newcastle haven't had a trophy and what's their realistic opportunities for a trophy. Is the League Cup one of his priorities this year? Do they want to put a pot in the cabinet for the first time in a long time? He's also got the Champions League, he's got yep. the Premier League. Yep. He's got a real juggling act to do yep. with a threadbare squad at the moment. Well, that's right, and, and you know, wants to go as far as he can in the Champions League this season. Priority will be to qualify for the Champions League next season. Newcastle fans want that first major trophy since the mid-50s. Wolves' last major trophy, much more recently than that, back in 1980, and that was a League Cup. Here is Anthony Gordon, running at speed down the left. Semedo sticks with him, uses his shoulder just to knock him off the ball, and the Wolves' man wins the first tussle, the first head-to-head -head tussle between those two this evening. That'll be a goal kick for Wolves. He's done well, Semedo, uh, against Gordon. He's kept him quiet, and I think that's probably one of the reasons that Gary O'Neill's opted for that back four today. He sees the threat that Newcastle have got in the wide areas in Almiron and Gordon, and if he's playing a five, his wing-backs might not necessarily be as deep, and the, the Newcastle attackers could cause them problems, but with the, the two there in Semedo and Totti in the full-back positions, they can get tight, they can get close, and they can force the Newcastle forwards back. Throw in for Wolves. Rain continues to fall heavily here at Molyneux. Huang has come deep to chest that back to Semedo. Semedo floats one forward. It bounces just inside the Wolves' half. And then it's very easily controlled by Cher for Newcastle. Trippier, bit of pace on the pass into Gimmer Reich. Looks right and left, goes to his left to find Byrne. Down the line towards Gordon, 10 yards inside the Wolves' half. Right in front of those Newcastle fans. Gordon is playing down the left in the first half here for Newcastle. And then the ball from Trippier is played out wide towards Gordon again. Gordon just picks up a bit of pace, but he's running back towards his own half. Trippier, almost in a central midfield role there, between his two centre-backs, plays it to his left to Cher, gets it back from Cher. 
takes a few paces forward little diagonal pass to his left to Joel Linton Joel Linton lays it back here for Newcastle to play from deep Gimmer Rice across the halfway line to Lascelles and back to Trippier again very patient possession from the away team Wolves nil Newcastle nil Dan Byrne giant figure making a move down the left looking for the return ball from Joa Linton chases hard Neto's too quick for him speeds in front of him gets a touch could only run it out of play for a Newcastle throw which Byrne will take quickly and he skids it off the wet pitch to Joa Linton Joa Linton back here to Cher Cher looks for the diagonal left to right Totti's read it and heads it away into the feet of Eight Nuri Trippier comes up to make the challenge Eight Nuri knocks it past him Cunha trying to beat Longstaff for pace not the best first touch on the ball and Lascelles cool as you like just drags it away from Cunha and plays it to Longstaff Paul Robinson they're going to have to work hard tonight Newcastle to pull this Wolves team out of position already out of possession you can see the game plan that Gary O'Neill's given them they're very organised they're very tight to the Newcastle players Anthony Gordon already drifted in infield trying to look for space trying to get hold of the ball Almiron doing the same as well Gary O'Neill spoke very very well on television on Monday night and you can see the tactical brain that he's got and he's clearly sent his team out here with a plan tonight Gary O'Neill and Eddie Howe were former Portsmouth teammates back in the day both of them all in black this evening Gary O'Neill with the uh, the gilet the sleeveless puffer over the black hoodie and the tight fitting black tracksuit trousers black trainers to match as well ball is Played forward to Longstaff, then Gimmerreich, straight back to Cher. Cher quickly moves it forward to Gordon. Little shoulder shake and he's away from Lamina. Joel Linton gives it back to Gordon on the left. Makes a dart into the penalty area, tries to get it back onto the right foot. And Semedo's in to clear hurriedly for Wolves and out for a throw into Newcastle. Really good by Anthony Gordon. He's a player that's in form at the moment. You can see he's enjoying his football up in Newcastle. He got the ball, his first thought was forward. Get into the box, he knows the defenders can't touch him. Newcastle have taken their throw. Wolves nil, Newcastle nil. 16 minutes gone in the first half. Newcastle going into the weekend with the top scorers in the Premier League so far this season with 24 goals. I was just trying to have a look at a Premier League table there to check whether Arsenal have gone past them. I'm not sure that they have. Arsenal have beaten Sheffield United 5-0 today with the Enketia hat-trick. Yeah, only five. Takes them. Newcastle got eight, didn't they? That's why they're <laughs> top scorers. Exactly. <laughs> Ball is back with Jose Sarr. At the moment, this one is nil-nil. Uh, there's Max Kilman. Kilman across to Semedo. Semedo's closed down by Joel Linton and Gordon. And Semedo's got to hurry here to keep the ball in. Down by the dead ball line. Clearance blocked by Joel Linton and goes out for a throw to Wolves. Yeah, Newcastle fans are close to that and felt it should have gone their way. But Anthony Taylor says no. That is a throw into Wolves in their right back position. 23 goals for Arsenal. 24 goals for, for Newcastle so Newcastle still ahead on that front but yet to score this evening but in terms of recent Premier League form uh, they've had some good wins uh, and some big wins Paul mentions the 8-0 win against Sheffield United of course 4-0 against Crystal Palace last weekend Dan Burns throw into Joa Linton Joa Linton can't hold on to it for Newcastle Bubakar Traore uh, making only a second Premier League start of the season for Wolves. So it's Joao Gomez who's dropped to the bench in terms of central midfielders with the return of Mario Lamina this evening. It's Lamina and Traore as the midfield pairing. Wolves work it out from the back. Lofted pass onto the chest of Semedo. Always looking for Neto. And that is really good covering from Fabian Scher. Comes sliding across to make the tackle. Plays the ball to Gimmerreich across the long staff. And back it comes to Nick Pope. Looks a threat, does Neto, over the top. Wolves quite happy to let Newcastle have possession, sacrifice possession. Oh, Newcastle have given it away. Chance here for Huang, edge of the box, lays it back to Cunha, side foots one straight at Pope. It's an easy save. Oh, he should do so much better. A striker, you've got to put your laces through that. It falls to Cunha, Newcastle sloppy with possession. Trippier loses possession, he almost passes it straight to Cunha on the edge of the box. Comes back to him, side foot from the edge of the box, straight at Nick Pope. He's got to put his laces through it. He's got to hit it harder into the corners. You were talking, Paul, about the, the spectators who aren't undercover this evening. There's a little sort of corner away to our right-hand side, which, which doesn't benefit from either roof. So the, the roof on our stand, the Billy Wright stand, or the Sir Jack Haywood away to our right. But it looks like ponchos provided. It certainly does. It, it looks like they've, uh, they've been to Alton Towers and got some ponchos. For, <laughs> those, in, for those of you who know uh, Molyneux, and it's the Graham Hughes stand in the corner. But yeah. I tell you, if that wind gets up, we're getting wet as well. Yeah, we could <laughs> be. Yeah, they're trying to look cheerful. 
like you do, as you say, at Alton Towers, sitting on those roller coasters in the pouring rain. <laughs> 19 minutes gone. First half, five live in BBC Sounds, Rugby Union World Cup final, full commentary on the way tonight. Kick-off at 8 o'clock, live in the Stade de France. This at the moment, though, is Wolves nil, Newcastle nil. Couple of commentaries for you from the Premier League tomorrow. Just note the kick-off times, actually, tomorrow. Slight change. We've got West Ham in Everton, uh, West Ham against Everton in full. That's a one o'clock kickoff. Three games kicking off at two. Aston Villa, Luton, Brighton, Fulham, Liverpool against Nottingham Forest. Commentary on each of those games available via the BBC Sport website and app. And then it's the Manchester Derby tomorrow. John Murray and Chris Waddle will bring you commentary of that one from half three kickoff at Old Trafford. Manchester United against Manchester City. Is it tonight the clocks go? Is it oh, confusing yes. tonight? Yeah, so these kick-off times, That's a really you've got to make point. sure you set your alarm for the right time tomorrow. God, I'm glad you reminded me because I'm doing West Ham Everton. I could, I could easily <laughs> have stuffed that up. Long ball over the top from Cher. Bounces once into the arms of Jose Sarr. He rolls it out to Semedo. Semedo's made ground up to the halfway line. There's Lamina, former uh, Southampton man, Fulham man, Juventus man as well, now at Wolves. Dawson, 13th season of Premier League football for him. That was a nice pass into the feet of Neto, and Neto couldn't control it. That works out well for Newcastle, though. Here they come on the counter. Joe Linton lays it off to Gordon. Gordon has a runner on the outside, curls across it. Oh, Sarr stretches. He's missed it. Callum Wilson somehow missed it, then hooks it into the back of the net. And Callum Wilson celebrates the goal, and Wolves are looking to see if there was a foul on their goalkeeper, Jose Sarr, as he came over the top of a couple of bodies to try and claim it. The video assistant referee will have a look, but for now, Callum Wilson has given Newcastle the lead. And I think the goal will stand, Ali. I think it's his own player. I think it's Craig Dawson that the goalkeeper's trying to get across the top of. The cross comes in, the goalkeeper makes the right decision. He comes for the ball, but in this wet weather, it slips between his fingers as he's clambering over the top of what looked like a number of bodies in the, in the box. But I think it's his own player. I think it's Craig Dawson that he's going over the top of. Wolves players are not complaining too much, neither is the goalkeeper. Newcastle players over at the far side celebrating, and I think they're celebrating the goal. Yeah, you're right, Paul. It does look like he collides with his own defender. Callum Wilson has, has two efforts from close range. The first is blocked, and the second, actually, is a really clever acrobatic finish. So, Jose Sarr jumps into Boubacar Traore and Sean Longstaff, the pair of them. The ball then falls to Callum Wilson, who side-foots the first attempt on goal. That's blocked. The goal does stand here at Molyneux. VAR are happy with that and Newcastle lead by a goal to nil. Ball spins up, Wilson heads it up to himself, and it's not quite a bicycle kick, but it's an acrobatic volley from close range to stick it into the back of the net for his sixth goal of the season. I was a fully paid-up member of the goalkeepers' union, but now I've come this side of the fence, I can be honest. He's dropped that one, Ali, you know. He's yeah. come out to collect the cross. He's, hit, he's bumped into two players, but the two players were underneath him and neither were looking at the goalkeeper. Both had eyes on the ball. He's made contact with his own player and he's just slightly taken his eye off the ball. And in this wet weather, you can't do that. It's slipped through his gloves and Callum Wilson's pounced once again. 44th Newcastle goal in the league uh, for Callum Wilson in terms of Premier League goals. So that takes him past a couple. Paul, on the list, he was level with... He takes him past a couple on the Newcastle list. He That's goes third I mean. ahead of Andrew Cole and Shola Amiobi. There we go. And now 44, just two behind Peter Beardsley. Uh, but he's still 104 behind you-know-who, Alan Shearer, uh, who was part of the Sports Report uh, coverage this evening after today's Premier League football. We had Bukayo Saka on live as well, speaking to Rob Noffman. If you missed any of that, available for you uh, in the Football Daily podcast via the BBC Sounds app. So Wolves nil, Newcastle 1, Callum Wilson uh, with the goal. And we're just past the halfway point in the first half here. Uh, with the rain continuing to tumble down from the dark, dark skies above us. Fabian Scher on the ball for Newcastle, inside his own half. Easy pass for him, right across the half to Trippier on the right. Trippier down the line. Wilson comes short, controls it, tries to hold off Craig Dawson. Wilson's on the floor, wins the free kick. Done well, Callum Wilson. Not much support around him. Held the ball up for his team and won a free kick. Be interesting to see what Gary O'Neill's Wolves do now. They had a game plan to sit back, invite Newcastle onto them, and they kind of hit them on the break a little bit, especially at home. But now they've got to go after the game. They've got to chase the game. Will they keep it the same? Will they keep the formation the same? I think they will for a while. It will assess what happens in this game. But the, the longer the game goes, the better Newcastle are becoming. 
Wolves nil, Newcastle one. Former England goalkeeper Paul Robinson uh, with us on Five Live and BBC Sounds this evening. Paul's former Tottenham team, top of the Premier League after the 2-1 win at Crystal Palace last night. Uh, your former Leeds team with a big win today as well, Paul, beat Huddersfield by four goals to one. Yeah, they've got a very good squad in that championship. They're looking strong at the moment. Here's Huang for Wolves. Oh, Semedo moving at pace, collects the pass, lays it off to the right. Cross comes in from the right, headed away to the edge of the penalty area. Wolves players go chasing, but Trippier is there first. Bobbles a pass forward to Almiron, back to Trippier. Strokes his pass into the Newcastle midfield, no one's there. Lamina intercepts, Traore. And now out wide to Eight Nuri, there's Lamina again. Traore, Traore turns, has space inside the Newcastle half, plays it across to a central position and Max Kilman is there to find Neto wide on the right-hand side. In Neto and Gordon, in terms of sort of wide players in the Premier League this season, we're watching two of the very best uh, in terms of the way the two have started their campaigns. Newcastle back into their defensive shape of forced Wolves back to the halfway line. Totti... Trying to take it past Almiron, lays it off to Lamina on the halfway line. He's got Semedo in a lot of space wide on the right, uses him. Neto's now suddenly made it over to our side of the field, so he's playing wide left. Eight Nuri sort of in the inside left channel, Huang and Cunha in the middle as well. So that's something for Newcastle to think about. They're interchanging well, Wolves, when they're in possession. Out of possession, they're pretty structured, they're pretty rigid, and they drop into shape very quickly. But when they're in possession, the manager's allowing them to interchange, and it's causing Newcastle a couple of problems. They've had steady possession now for a while, Wolves, without really going anywhere. Diagonal ball from Traore, looking for the run of Semedo. Dan Byrne struggling to deal with Semedo. Flags up. Newcastle get the free kick. Dan Byrne was under pressure. Semedo had a little tug and a pull at him, trying to win that ball, and Newcastle get the decision does well does Dan Byrne it's a long ball crossfield ball over his head and Semedo on the outside Byrne goes for it touches, tries to put a first touch and it doesn't get there Semedo nicks it round him but Dan Byrne gets his body between him and the ball wins the free kick for his side Wolves nil Newcastle won uh, six of the eight Premier League games between these two clubs at Molyneux have finished 1-1 so that's certainly still a possibility uh, this evening Huang Chases a ball down the left, great first touch, working it onto his right foot, angles tight, back it comes to Cunha, shots deflected, all the pace is out of it, and Nick Pope grabs it on the goal line. Once again, Wang finds himself in a goal-scoring position, they're just lacking quality in that final third of the field, the Wolves. All the build-ups there, they get themselves in the positions, but Wang once again, he just makes the wrong decision. Newcastle on the attack quickly, Gordon stopped by a crunching challenge from Semedo, clean challenge, Cunha skips away from Longstaff, he's still going the Brazilian, Trippier, in his way now, past Trippier into the penalty area, cross to the far post, and it beats the far post, it beats everyone, Neto closing in, trying to get on the end of it, but it's gone behind, and in fact, Nick Pope got a touch on that, it's a corner for Wolves. I think he made the save, Cunha there showed pace, that I don't think Kieran Trippier realised that he had, Trippier got out to him, he pushed the ball past him, got into the box, and he's on a decent angle, 12, 13 yards out, fires it bottom left-hand corner, and at first glance you'd think it's just gone wide, but Nick Pope's held his position and he's made a brilliant save. What makes it even better is he's held his position as a goalkeeper. He's not gone too close to the ball. Brilliant turn from Huang from the corner, floated cross into the near post and Pope's read that one as well. Really good save that was, Ali, really good save. Fingertips in the bottom left-hand corner. If he's a yard or two further out of his goal, that's past him before he knows. He's held his position a couple of yards off his line, which has enabled him to get his full body across. Fantastic save, bottom left-hand corner. That's why it's so good, Paul, when we got the goalkeepers in the commentary position, because, you know, I, I think that's a good save, I can say good save. You've actually been there. You know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> Maybe not so as good as that. <laughs> <laughs> Byrne plays the ball back to Cher. Coming up to half an hour played in the first half. Wolves nil. Newcastle won. Newcastle coming into the game off the back of that Champions League defeat at home to Borussia Dortmund on Wednesday night. Missing the likes of Sven Botman, Alexander Isak, Harvey Barnes, Sandro Tonali. Has now started his... 10-month ban, Jacob Murphy's missing, Elliot Anderson is missing as well, but here they are and leading. 
Trippier just inside the Wolves half, wide on the right. Longstaff's first time ball, Almiron's in loads of space there. 30 yards out central position, Joe Linton just puts too much on the pass, but Gordon will get there first. He's just got to run out to the left-hand touchline, then chips a little ball in field, edge of the box. Well controlled by Gimmerreich, onto his right foot. Still Gimmerreich inside the box, lays it back, comes in for Longstaff, drives it. Longstaff gets the rebound back, hits another shot, and that is blocked on the edge of the box, and Wolves survive. Putting the bodies on the line there, Wolves, and having to Newcastle finding that space just in between the midfield three and the back four. Gordon, Longstaff, there's holes in there. Joe Linton finds the ball, turns. They get two shots off Longstaff. His first one's blocked. Second one he should do better with. But once again, another really good opportunity for Newcastle. Throw in for Wolves. On the right, inside their own half. Cunha's done well again with the ball at his feet. Beats two players, then looks for Huang. Gimaraes reads the pass. Huang wasn't quite sure when it was going to come. Gimaraes slides in and intercepts. A bit of frustration you could hear from the Wolves fans there as the move broke down. Here's Almiron. Almiron plays back to Trippier. No need for Newcastle to rush. They've got the lead in the game. Callum Wilson with the goal. It's a good game as well, isn't it? It's nice to see two teams that are not overplaying in the wrong areas. There's two teams that are not afraid to put, put it into areas where they'll allow players to be creative, they'll allow players to play. Far too often we see teams overplaying in the wrong areas, making mistakes and costing themselves goals. We've got two teams here who play football in the right areas. Gimaraes in the centre circle, lays it off to Almiron. Almiron across to Trippier, just inside the Wolves' half. Uses Almiron again, gets away from Lamina. And Traore tries to play in Callum Wilson. Wilson was slightly on his heels and the pass runs through to Jose Saar. Saar rolls it out to Totti. Short pass from him to Lamina. Stocky central midfielder. Stands just outside the Wolves penalty area. Looking for options here. Turns to his left and finds Totti again. Totti's got eight Nuri. Hugging the touchline. Still inside the Wolves half. Cross here to Dawson. Dawson's going to ping the diagonal. Semedo takes his first touch brings it in field little one-two with Neto Semedo couldn't control the return pass and so Newcastle have a chance to play out Traore very nearly intercepts it and then Newcastle win a free kick Gimma Rice is just pulled back just short of the halfway line and uh, Anthony Taylor blows the whistle and says yes that is a foul that's a game plan that Wolves are looking to implement in possession Semedo is given the licence to push on he doubles up with Neto on that right-hand side and pushes on against Shah and Dan Byrne and they're trying to exploit the space. They've, they've a little interaction, balls played out to the left-hand side. It's cut back into the centre-half, Dawson, and that big diagonal is something that they've tried on two or three occasions this first half. Newcastle in green this evening, defending the goal away to our left. Rain continues uh, to sweep across the pitch here at Molyneux. Ball is with Fabian Scher. He receives it from Byrne inside his own half. Pass out wide to Trippier, laid off to Lascelles, poor pass forward from Lascelles, intercepted by Eight Nuri. Lascelles goes rushing in to try and win it back, fouls Eight Nuri, free kick for Wolves, ironic cheers, and a very precise pass from Gary O'Neill, it was like he was back in the game there, he playing it to Eight and Nuri. He, he tiptoed back into his box like a naughty schoolboy, he wasn't allowed out, wasn't he? He got on the pitch and realised where he was. Lamina's ball to the right finds Semedo, Neto's tucked in field here, Neto with six assists so far for Wolves this season Kieran Trippier with six for Newcastle that's the most of uh, any players in the Premier League both playing wide right for their teams Trippier obviously from the full back position but Neto's the man they are always looking for here it goes out wide to him now but he's deep here difficult for him to affect the game from there so he plays it back into central midfield just inside the Newcastle half Wolves in the old gold Shirts, black numbers on their backs. Eight Nuri wide on the left. Down the line it goes. Cunha lets it run past him. Trippier chases. Here's Cunha up against Trippier. Down by the byline on the left. Scoops it. Gets the ball back from the block from Longstaff. Looks for Lamina on the edge of the penalty area. Joel Linton intercepts. Takes his time to find Longstaff. Eight Nuri tries to hook a right leg around Longstaff to win the ball. Gets a couple of touches on it. And it goes out for a Newcastle throw in the right back position. Cunha again finds himself in such a good position. Deep inside that Newcastle box. But making the wrong choices again. Three or four occasions in this first half. Neto, Cunha, Huang. They found themselves in really good positions in the final third. They've either made the wrong decision or the execution of the pass has been wrong. And it's just a little bit of quality in the final third that have, have cost Wolves so far. Definite tug on the shirt from Totti there. Trying to stop Almiron in his tracks. Couldn't do so. Almiron then eventually runs into the uh, 
sizeable figure of Mario Lamina who gets it back to Jose Sarr, clears first time, Burns sticks out a leg and then hooks it forward, bouncing ball chested down by Kilman. Kilman out to Semedo, wide it goes to Neto, five or six yards into the Wolves half, and back it's played again to Lamina, across to Traore, Traore back to Dawson, Dawson switching the angle of attack, goes to his right again to find Kilman. Kilman at walking pace inside his own half. Back to Dawson. Dawson goes for the longer ball, the diagonal onto the chest of Neto, unmarked. Brings that ball down. Anthony Gordon gets back to try and get in his way. Neto brings it infield. Rolls his pass to Traore. Traore wide on the left to eight, Nuri. Eddie Howe down on one knee in the technical area, scribbling down some notes. I'd imagine in pencil rather than ink in this rain. Here's Neto inside the box. Left-footed shot palmed over the bar by Nick Pope. Real sting in the strike from Neto. It's behind for a Wolves corner. It's that long diag again. Once again, Semedo in midfield. He get his, pings the ball out to the right-hand side. Ends up with Neto. Cuts inside the box onto his left foot. Fires a shot at Nick Pope. A save that you'd expect him to make. Straight out the goalkeeper. Nothing he can do other than tip it over the bar. But it's becoming predictable with Wolves. Open, open the body up. Long diag to this right-hand side with Semedo, with Neto, but it's working for them. Newcastle don't have an answer. That's the voice of Paul Robinson. Wolves have a corner here at Molyneux. They're trailing 1-0. Deeper one from Neto to the far post. Headed in! Equaliser for Wolves, scored by Mario Lamina. His first goal for the club. Unmarked at the back post. Neto's corner finds him. Powerful header beyond Nick Pope. It's Wolves 1, Newcastle 1. Well, it's just a straightforward corner, outswinging corner. Newcastle defence and Nick Pope getting all kinds of mess. Lamina at the far post, waist height heads the ball in. It's an outswinging corner from eight Nori, I think, from this side. The Newcastle defence getting a real muddle. The goalkeeper comes, the goalkeeper stops. He ends up bumping into his own players, decides not to come, goes back onto his goal line. Lamina at the far post, stoops low. Nobody on the far post for Newcastle. Simple task, Wolves are back in it. Good stooping header from Mario Lamina. Fist pump from Gary O'Neill. Wolves 1, Newcastle 1. Match of the day tonight, BBC 1 at 20 past 10. It'll have the goals for you from last night's encounter between Crystal Palace and Tottenham. Arsenal 5, Sheffield United 0 today. Two goals in this game already. The lunchtime win for Brentford away at Chelsea by two goals to 0. And Bournemouth beating Burnley by two goals to one. That has moved Bournemouth out uh, of the bottom three in the Premier League table this evening. Uh, they are one point above Luton. Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United, uh, the bottom three. Sheffield United, after their thumping at the Emirates Stadium, on one point with a goal difference of minus 22. Gordon nearly getting away down the inside left channel for Newcastle. Danger read by Craig Dawson. He got there in time, slides in and clears it out for the Newcastle throw. Eight minutes remaining in the first half. Been a good game. And uh, a goal for each team. Wolves won. Newcastle won. Gimaraes felt he was fouled by Huang. Anthony Taylor said it was a free kick. Gimaraes sort of tried to keep playing. The ball hadn't stopped rolling. So we've got to do it by the book and we're going to come back for the free kick to be taken properly. I don't like it when players do that. They almost referee the game themselves. Come Irish there, he just stopped and looked at the referee and almost just said, he stopped the game himself and said, give me a free kick. And the yeah. referee duly obliged. I saw Saka do that last weekend uh, for Arsenal against Chelsea and Pat Nevin was telling me the reason he'd done it was basically to say to the referee, right, the next time I get challenged like that by Cucurea, I want a yellow card. Sure enough, next time he did it, yellow card. Players are clever and... Uh, you know, they, they, have, they do have an influence on the referee on the field at times. Wolves 1, Newcastle 1. Ball played out to the left by Dan Byrne. Anthony Gordon just inside the Wolves half. Back to Byrne again. Jeers and whistles you can hear. Ringing around Molyneux from the home fans. I'm presuming... For Anthony, who's that for, Paul? What's that all about? Is that just decisions going against them? It's certainly not against their team who are now back in the game, or whether they're picking on a particular Newcastle player. The ball towards Wilson. He's brought that down brilliantly on the right. Looking for Longstaff. Sliding challenge from eight Nuri. Ball still runs to Longstaff, who picks himself up, plays it back to Trippier. 
boost go up a notch when Trippier gets it. They continue, though, with Lascelles on the ball. Lascelles cross in from the right, trying to do a Trippier, headed away by Kilman, out for a throw into Newcastle, almost down by the corner flag on the right. Notice Newcastle in possession there, seeing Kieran Trippier just taking up that hybrid role in midfield, which we've seen so many fullbacks do this season. Eddie Howe just shouted some words of advice onto the pitch, onto his, onto his players in the last five minutes or so. They've gone with a back three and Trippier more in that inverted fullback role. Six minutes remaining in the first half. Wolves one, Newcastle one. Almiron, right hand corner of the Wolves penalty area. Trippier's pass intercepted by Traore. Huang. His pass now cut out by Joa Linton. So Newcastle with a chance to get back on the front foot inside the Wolves half. Gimaraes, right in the middle of that Wolves half, stabs one forward to Gordon, gives it straight back to the Brazilian. Gimaraes then plays it out to the left to Byrne, receives it back again. Green shirted players of Newcastle start to make the runs into the box, but Gimaraes goes low across the. Uh, Wolves half to Almiron, Fabian Scher thinking about a pile driver, good scoop pass to Longstaff, brought it down, wouldn't quite fall for him to hit the shot, eventually does so, Dawson blocks, corner for Newcastle. What a great ball that was by Fabian Scher, everybody stood off, let this big centre half have the ball, goes his way into the Wolves half, gets about 25 yards out and he just lifts the most delicate of balls to Longstaff in the box, first touch wasn't great, got the shot off but he's won his team a corner. Wolves 1, Newcastle 1. Five minutes remaining in the first half. Mark Chapman back with you at half-time. Still building up towards the Rugby Union World Cup final tonight. Full commentary here on 5 Live from 8 o'clock. We'll be handing over to Sonny McLaughlin and the team when the full-time whistle blows here. Trippier delays the taking of the corner. That further enrages the Wolves fans behind the goal away to our right. Then he delivers the outswinger, beats everyone. Longstaff gives chase, gets there first, plays it back to Gordon, takes a chance but beats Neto. Gets past eight Nuri as well, plays it wide to the left. Shoa Linton steps in, lays it off to Gimma Rice. Gimma Rice holds off Cunha, holds off Traore as well, running from left to right, tees himself up with the shot. That's blocked by Semedo, and it goes high and behind for another corner to Newcastle. Well, Gary O'Neill's going mad at his defence here down below. Bruno Gamares there picks the ball up on the far side of the field, goes past two, three, four Wolves defenders, finds himself just inside the box and gets a shot off. Finally, they get it blocked, but yet again, it's another corner for Newcastle. Bruno Guimaraes does extremely well. Kieran Trippier gets ready to take again, right under the nose of the assistant referee. The ball is just touching the very outside uh, of the, uh, the quadrant. It was ever thus. Trippier holds a left arm in the air, four paces to the ball, another away swinger. Drops down in the Wolves box. Huang taking no chances. Smashes it clear with his right foot. Neto gives chase. Pope controls it on his thigh inside his own half. Slightly skews his pass to the right, but no danger for Newcastle. Longstaff to Trippier, back to Longstaff. Weak pass from him, intercepted by the Wolves goal scorer Mario Lamina. And then to break play up, Dan Byrne over on the right wing just goes charging into the back of eight. Nuri rather clumsily knocks him to the floor. And Newcastle quite happy to concede the free kick and get back into their defensive shape. I think he realised how far out of position he was there. Dan <laughs> Byrne he needed a breather to get back, didn't he? Ball goes wide to Semedo. Semedo with a couple of tricks, then comes up against Shoa Linton, lays it off. Here's Traore. Traore to Totti. First time ball, just opens his body up. Wide it goes to Eight Nuri, back into the midfield. Traore steps away from the challenge of Gimaraes. Pass is cut out by Shoa Linton, but there was a foul by Gimaraes. Referee Anthony Taylor was trying to play the advantage. He comes back for the Wolves free kick. They've taken it quickly. 1 1, Eight Nuri. Up towards Cunha. Cunha's layoff to Totti. Then eight Nuri again. Back to Totti. Totti, meaty pass to Craig. Dawson nearly loses it under pressure from Wilson. Wilson's tripped him. And that'll be a free kick for Wolves. Yeah, got the ball caught under his feet there, Craig Dawson. An example of trying to play out. Newcastle were pressing high with Almiron, Callum Wilson, and Gordon had cut off his out ball out the, out the back. His out ball was to the right hand side to Semedo, but Gordon was there filling the space. And Craig Dawson got himself tangled up, and luckily for him, he won himself a free kick. Two minutes remaining in the first half, plus a bit of added time. Five live, live at Molyneux. If you're on the move and you want the football commentaries, you want the five live output, then download the BBC Sounds app and take us with you uh, wherever you go. All the football podcasts there for you as well. The Football Daily podcast, uh, the Monday Night Club podcast. That'll be back, of course. Uh, this Monday evening with Mark Chapman and the team our Football League podcast 72 plus Euro Leagues as well Anthony Gordon with pace down the left Kilman sticks with him gets a toe in that'll be another corner for Newcastle 
taught my dad how to download the BBC Sounds app the other day. Sure, That's cool. how easy well it is. Done. That's how remarkably <laughs> easy it is. <laughs> Very good. And what's is, is he listening to you in particular, do you think? Or I, I suspect the Rugby World Cup final tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. Is he a rugby fan, is he? Very much so. OK. What a fantastic game that's going to be it tonight, following cool. us, isn't it? Now then, yeah, so that's an 8 o'clock kick-off, New Zealand, South Africa. The last team to win the World Cup that wasn't New Zealand or South Africa was actually England back in 2003. That, that's what that rivalry at that level of the game is is all about. Last minute of the first half here. Wolves won, Newcastle won. Corner from the left this time. Right boot of Trippier whipped into the near post and Semedo sort of goes down on his knees, puts his chest in the way and blocks it behind for another corner. Martin Johnson, by the way, part of the uh, the Five Live team this evening. You'll hear from Bobby Skinstat, former South African international, Andrew Mertens, uh, former All Black, Matt Dawson as ever, uh, and Chris Jones, our rugby union correspondent with the commentary. Trippier low corner into the near post. Newcastle trying to work it to Almiron on the edge of the box. Wang was looking to clear. Caught a Newcastle Given player it. as he did so, and it's a penalty. It was inside the penalty area. Wang took a first touch to tee himself up for the clearance. Then a Newcastle player came in to make the challenge, and as Wang swung his boot to clear the ball, he caught Fabian Cher, and Anthony Taylor, no hesitation, Paul, says that's a penalty. I think this is one where the referees had to go by the rule, but Wang has no idea where Shah is. He's just coming across from the right-hand side. He's even stopped himself from kicking through the ball. I think this will be reviewed, because Wang's gone to clear the ball just as Shah has come across him. He seems as though he's stopped the follow-through. I'm not sure whether he's caught him or not. The referee's given it on the field, but VAR will definitely look at this. Fabian Shares reaction to, to the contact, which I, I think is relatively minor, is quite dramatic and made me think he'd absolutely whacked him and it should be a penalty. That's why this is being checked. The ball is on the spot. I'm not sure there's contact at all, you know. Right. Unless it's with his back foot that he just trips him. There's certainly no malice, there's no intent. It's an accidental trip, if anything. Bruno Gimaraes is standing over the ball on the penalty spot, but I think that's the classic. Callum Wilson's away to the right. So Gimaraes is taking the heat from the Wolves players who were trying to put him off. I don't think he's going to take it. You're right, you know. I think Huang touches the ball, stops his right foot, and then Cher... What Cher's right foot here? He does it himself. He almost puts his foot down himself. It's a decision here where there is a slightest of contact between Huang and Cher. It's the back foot. It's, if, if this is given, it's for the slightest of touches. Anthony Taylor, I think, is going to have to come over to the screen here to check his initial decision. I can see why in real time he would have thought that was a penalty. They are having so many looks at the replay here, trying to be absolutely sure. You can't tell me, though, Paul. I mean, I, there might be very minimal contact there, but that's not enough to take share down like that. I think that Newcastle will be given this penalty because there is not enough to see on VAR that was suggest that the referee on the field would be overruled. But we've had that many inconsistent and inconclusive VARs. They can't afford to get this wrong. But what exactly, Paul, what they're doing here, and people will complain about the amount of time it's taking, but because of the mistake in the Tottenham-Liverpool game, because that was done quickly, they are going to take as much time as they need to get this absolutely spot on. Now, I think at the moment, just judging by Anthony Taylor's face, he is receiving instructions in his earphone. He's trying to keep the players away from him. And we are still waiting for a decision. And we had one in the Bournemouth-Burnley game today that you'll see on Match of the Day tonight. Jay Rodriguez thought he'd equalise for Burnley late on, but then there was a five, six-minute VAR delay, and we're getting that here. They're so under pressure to get these decisions right. Rain keeps pouring down. You're absolutely right, Paul. The penalty stands. So Huang He Chan made very slight contact with Fabian Cher. To the naked eye, it looked like he really caught him. Watching on the replay again and again and again, he tried to stop his right foot in the clearance. Cher went down very dramatically, but the video assistant referee, Jared Gillett, has decided there is enough in that, in the laws of the game, that the penalty should stand. Well, this is one when you watch Match of the Day tonight, make your own decision, because you, you have to judge the amount of contact. And I honestly think it's because it was given on the field is the reason that it wasn't overturned. Yeah, had it not been given, they wouldn't have gone back to it and, and overturned. It's I know one what of you're those. Yeah. Right, so Bruno Gimaraes, of course, not taking the penalty. Callum Wilson uh, will do so, and if he scores it, he gets within one goal of Peter Beardsley's total of Premier League goals for Newcastle United. Referee Anthony Taylor comes to have a word with Jose Sarr. It's taken a long time to get to this point. It's Wolves 1, Newcastle 1. Already played three minutes of added time at the end of the first half. Callum Wilson 
steps back from the ball, jogs on the spot and strokes it. Oh, it's nearly saved by Saar. Saar gets a big hand to that and it squirts off his left arm, goes back into the back of the net. Callum Wilson has his second goal of the night. It's Wolves 1, Newcastle 2, but he got a little bit lucky with that one. He's really a lucky Jose Saar in goal. He dives to his right. Callum Wilson, he does that penalty that strikers do. They fake to go down one side and they just lift it into the middle of the goal. Just try and lift it over the goalkeeper's legs. Saar's left his left arm there. It's hit his left arm as he's diving away and gone into the opposite corner. He's really unlucky, the Wolves goalkeeper. Just going to see it again on the monitors. Yeah, perfectly described by Paul Robinson. Wilson with the right instep, good pace on it. Hits Saar's hand onto his left boot trickles over the goal line into the back of the net Wolves 1 Newcastle 2 Wolves will certainly have complaints about the penalty decision and Jose Sarr can feel very unfortunate not to have saved it Callum Wilson's seventh uh, goal of what is proving to be a very successful season for him once again and Callum Wilson now has 18 goals in his last 21 Premier League appearances. When he plays, he scores. England form. You look what Ollie yeah. Watkins is doing, Aston yeah. Villa. He's now putting himself right back in the frame. He went to Newcastle, he took that number nine shirt, which does carry a weight of expectation. He wanted that. He's going to get a run of games in the team now. He's scoring the goals, so he's going to stake a claim. Pedro Neto's gone down. 30 yards out in a central position. Anthony Taylor gives Wolves the free kick. It's probably further than that, actually. It's probably 35 to 40 yards out, so too far out for a long-range strike on goal. Wolves 1, Newcastle 2. Plenty to talk about from the first half here. And Newcastle with the win if they get it tonight. will move above Aston Villa on goal difference, go a point behind Liverpool, two points behind Manchester City, both of whom play tomorrow. Neto's free kick scooped in the box, bounces once into the arms of Nick Pope. Nick Pope all in light blue, comes jogging out to the edge of his box, but Newcastle will be in no rush. Quite happy to take this through to half-time. Leading as they are by two goals to one. Pope throws the ball out to himself. Sliding attempt from Huang to block the clearance. Good flick on from Almiron. Dawson heads it away. Joel Linton's there first. Powerful run from Joel Linton. Still going. Up to the edge of the box. Shoots and saved by Jose Saar. Not enough power in the strike to really test Saar from the edge of the box. Well, there's acres of space between the Wolves midfield and the defence. Dawson wins the header there and Joel Linton spots it. Nips onto the ball. And with two touches, he's into the box. We always talk about these pockets and these spaces in between the lines but the lines between the Wolves back four and the midfield today are where Newcastle have caused them all the problems. 51 minutes played in this first half so far. Cunha will chase a long ball forward. Nick Pope's missed the clearance. Cunha onto it. Angle's tight. And Newcastle have enough men back there to get it away and knock it behind for a corner. They don't even feel that that should be a corner. They're claiming handball by Cunha. Yeah, Wolves are looking for a handball. They're all surrounding referee Anthony Taylor. They think there's a, ref there's a handball from one of the centre-halves. Nick Pope comes out, ends up in no man's land and he stops because the pitch is so zippy he thinks that the ball's coming onto him Oh, did oh. it touch his hand it's Gimaraish who leaps in on the edge of the penalty area Cunha gets there just before him doesn't he, goes to lift the ball over him checking, checking for the handball now if that's hit his arm it's brushed his fingers, Wolves will say the contact at the other end for the Newcastle penalty was minimal Gimaraish is running his left arm is sort of bent at the elbow no, they've decided no penalty you're describing it brilliantly. I was just about to say, if that's given, that's extremely harsh. I don't think that's a penalty. As you can see, that the, the locals don't think that they'd agree with the referee <laughs> after the decision that they've just been on the end of. And he's not going to get a very warm reception now. Right. Have a listen to the Wolves fans then on the half-time whistle, feeling very aggrieved that a penalty was given against Huang, stuck into the back of the net by Callum Wilson for his second goal in the game, and then feeling even more aggrieved. Paul Robinson, they didn't get... I mean, I, I don't think that should have been a handball from Bruno Gimmerich. Been a good first half here. It's been a great first half. Two teams looking to win the football match, uh, going forward, pressing high, good in possession. Two teams that are looking to score goals. Wolves will feel aggrieved because of the way that the penalty was given against them and not given to them. As you can hear now, the referee is nearing the edge of the pitch, <laughs> just about to go down the tunnel. Wolves 1, Newcastle 2, rain still falling at Molyneux, Mark. You can understand why Anthony Taylor gave it on the field, but that, that's never a penalty. I mean, he hasn't touched him, but put it this way, a Newcastle fan I know sent me a message going, I'd have been livid if that had been given against us. Yeah, but he, but he has to have touched him, doesn't he? I mean, they, Does they he? can't... Well, what are they giving it for then if well, he's not touched know. him? Well, I don't know. Do you think he touches him? And the other thing that I would look at if I was doing the VR is, if, the, if there is any contact at all, which I, I'm not sure there is, it's on Cher's yeah. right leg and he goes down holding his left. 
goes down holding his left but he puts his right foot in a position doesn't he if you watch it closely his right foot goes out at a 90 degree angle and whether that's the touch or whether that's him inviting the contact like we see so many times players being clever enough to invite contact that's been so inconclusive we can't see whether there is or there isn't contact and because the referee's given it I think that's the only reason it could be given uh, Paul Alley second half on the way don't forget we've got the Rugby Union World Cup final from 8 o'clock uh, as well uh, all the build up at the end of the second half from Molyneux although that may not be much build up because that first half has lasted nearly 55 minutes uh, Chelsea nil, Brentford 2 Arsenal 5 Sheffield United nil. Bournemouth 2, Burnley 1 in the Premier League so far today. In the EFL, all the leaders of their respective divisions won. Leicester won 2 1 at QPR in the Championship. Portsmouth came from 2 down to beat Reading 3 2. Stockport beat Tranmere 2 0. Also in League 2 this evening, Grimsby have sacked their manager, Paul Hurst. They lost 1 0 at Doncaster. Four straight defeats for the club, so Hurst has lost his job. Jude Bellingham scored an unbelievable equaliser for Real Madrid and then a 92nd minute winner as they beat Barcelona in El Clas. Classico by two goals to one. Harry Kane got a hat-trick for Bayern, including one from in his own half, uh, as they won 8-0. In Rugby League today, England beat Tonga 14-4 to secure the series win with a game to spare. There are wins for Australia and the Netherlands at the Cricket World Cup. The win for the Netherlands over Bangladesh drops England to the bottom of the table. Ancient Wisdom won the big race at Doncaster. Uh, and it has been confirmed that Tyson Fury's heavyweight fight uh, against Francis Ngannou in Saudi Arabia tonight will be a professional bout and it will come under the jurisdiction of the British Boxing Board of Control. You can follow that on the BBC Sport website from around nine o'clock uh, and there will be all the reaction in the boxing podcast that you can get uh, from BBC Sounds. We'll bring you some reaction to the day's football and rugby league and head to Paris ahead of the World Cup final after the latest BBC News at 6.26. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. And with the news, I'm Stuart Clarkson. Israel's Defence Minister says the war against Hamas in Gaza has entered a new phase. Tanks and troops went in as part of last night's ground operation, with the Israeli army strongly warning people to move south for their own safety. Israel says it hit 150 targets overnight as airstrikes intensified, killing several senior Hamas commanders. Our correspondent Rushdie Abu Alouf is in Gaza. The biggest refugee camp in Gaza, Shatta refugee camp, also was bombed heavily. I saw very uh, strong uh, footage of destruction inside the, the camp with, with about 100,000 people. They live in this camp. About half a million people are still living in Gaza City and the north, the area where Israel asked the people uh, to leave. Tonight, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been meeting families of some of the 229 hostages still being held by Hamas. They say they're running out of time and patience and they want to know if Israel's escalation is endangering the lives of their loved ones. Here's our international editor, Jeremy Bowen. The argument made by Israel is the way to get the hostages back is to show resolve, to apply power, to apply pressure, and that is the way that Hamas will, they argue, crack and then release the hostages. And we're expecting to hear from Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, in the next few minutes. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, says he was surprised by the unprecedented escalation of Israel's strikes on Gaza. He also says he's encouraged by growing international consensus for a pause in fighting to allow for the release of hostages and allow aid to enter the territory. Aid organisations have raised concerns about getting essentials in, made worse today by problems with communications networks. Juliet Toomer is from the UN Relief Agency for Palestinian Refugees. We managed to re-establish some contacts with what we call area officers. This is our teams who are spread around the Gaza Strip, so that's good. And we've had, of course, because of the telecommunications uh, collapse, uh, to reduce uh, some of our operations as of this morning. And here, around 100,000 100, people have taken part in a pro-Palestinian march in central London demanding a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. Two arrests were made. One person was taken into custody after a police officer was assaulted. Earlier, the Foreign Secretary James cleverly urged demonstrators to be conscious of disinformation and manipulation as they took part in the march. You can stay up to date on the BBC News website and app and we'll have lots more reaction to today's events in Gaza with Nick Erdley from 10.30 tonight after the rugby. 
BBC Five Live. Hello and welcome to Cammy and Ben's Proper Football Podcast. Absolutely thrilled to say we've been invited back for third series alongside me, the lenders, Chris Not really, Frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was cheating. My captain had been sent off because a Nisseroid was training injury. All the boys are going, have you given up the number nine? I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a couple of players went, did you sell it? <laughs> we, no, 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 no. I've had so many nice comments about our podcast. It's incredible. Cammy and Ben's proper football podcast. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Mark Chapman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Wolves won Newcastle 2 at the break, a second half on the way, followed by the Rugby Union World Cup final. Let's just get some reaction from the day's football. Uh, Arsenal thrashed Sheffield United 5 0 at the Emirates, uh, and it included a hat trick from Eddie and Ketia. And Ketia with the effort! Eddie, firstly, congratulations your first Premier League hat trick. It must be a great feeling. Yeah, amazing. Um, obviously, it's not been been easy. You know, last month I lost my my auntie, so I just want to dedicate this these three goals to her. You know, her family were here watching today, so I want a really special moment. I want to dedicate it to her. Um, the first goal, brilliant touch. Um, you'd be very pleased with the finish as well. It was it was it was important as well because it was just getting a little bit frustrating at nil nil, nearly half an hour. Yeah, I think um, these games is always about patience, especially up front in a dangerous area. It's about not losing discipline and arriving in the good zones. And Yeah, it was a good ball from deck and a lovely first touch and finish for myself. And number three, wow. Yeah, it's an amazing goal. Obviously, good pass from Emil. Love playing with him. So, yeah, it was a really great strike from outside the box and a special moment, like I said, to, to get three goals in front of the home fans and my family. But then what are you doing? It's a penalty. Do you, do you know, I don't know if you know this, there's only... Two Arsenal players have ever scored four goals in a Premier League game. Thierry Henry, Andre Arshavin. It could have been Henry, Henry yeah. Arshavin and Ketia. I know, I know. And to be fair, my first instinct was to grab the ball and go. But obviously Fabio won it and he's expecting a little one um, soon. So it was a good moment. And I think it's about being a team, team player. You know, he's found me on other occasions in the game. So it was his time to, to get a chance and he took it away. So I'm happy. Steve Wilson with the question. Sheffield United, bottom of the table, nine defeats out of ten. They've conceded 29 goals. Here's Paul Heckingbottom. First half, we competed. We limited them to only yeah, one save. I think Wes had uh, second half. Yeah, the nature of the goals probably reflect the performance in the second half because I thought they outfought us as well. They, they were good with the ball. We, we expect that. We know we're going to come here and play against top players. We get that. Um, but first half we competed really, really well. The timing of the second goal, um, and, and as they up their game, they play more energy, more aggression, and that for me is what what took the game away from us. Uh, yeah, and, and but listen, I know we're missing players and we're missing personalities as well as players. So big personalities with physical presence. But whilst it's an opportunity for for the younger players to come on and, and perform. It's also a big learning curve and a big eye opener um, because teams, yeah, no one's going to feel sorry for us. Everyone's fighting for the points for their own reasons. Um, yeah, and it just shows the, the levels that there are in this league. Bournemouth beat Burnley 2 1. The winner was uh, a Philip Billing chip from 40 yards. Burnley had an equaliser ruled out after a five and a half minute VAR check in stoppage time. Here's Bournemouth boss Andoni Irola. Especially considering the, it was a stoppage time, it was a key decision, no? And uh, we told them, take the time you need, but give us the right decision. Even if you have to spend more time, I think, in the 90-something minutes, uh, you have to be really, really sure of the decision you make because it has consequences for Barley, for Bournemouth, and I think, it likely for us, it, it was uh, for us. And, and Donny, what do you think that, that three points might give you and your team in terms of confidence? I think it, it was a really needed one because at the end uh, you need you know the the performances the work you are putting to to receive points and I think the players really needed this one we hope it's the first of, of of many but we have to keep working because everything right now is costing us I think we should have won the game easily but when you are in the position we are there's always uh, even in the last decision of the VAR we were thinking 
how we are not going to win this today, no? But luckily this time, for probably first time in the season, went for us. We heard from Thomas Frank during Sports Report after Brentford's 2-0 win at Stamford Bridge. For Chelsea, it was their ninth home defeat this year. Here's Maurizio Pochettino. Well, I think, uh, yes, also is when you concede the goal that you score and lose a little bit of concentration and, and the focus, that was the problem because it's, it's, we concede the goal is uh, through, uh, through in, no? Um, yes, disappointed because after this, for them, it's about to believe, is to go deeper and deeper and deeper and go on contra-attack and sometimes for us to take some risks, some rush decision, you know, when you really to be calm and to play and and it's norm- normally the atmosphere is, is, is going to be, you know, to push the player to going forward. And sometimes you need to be calm and to keep possession. But that happened because it's uh, the situation. But now it's about to be calm and to, you know, to try to to recover our, you know, and our energy for Wednesday because it's an important game against Blambo. In the Rugby League, England wrapped up the three-test series against Tonga with a game to spare. They won the second test 14-4 at Huddersfield. Matty Ashton getting two tries in the first half. Here's the England head coach, Sean Wayne. Very, very proud. I thought it was a great effort, but a little bit scruffy in the second half. But after the things that have been said to us this, this, this week from the opposition, some of it was disgraceful about how we didn't win last week. They wanted a firmer ground, they got a firmer ground, and they didn't win, so... Um, that was a big driving factor for us this week, some of the things that have been said. But uh, I'm so proud of the players that we've got this series. You know, we're going to go on better next week. Yeah, you're clearly angry about it, Sean. I guess the tone was set when when Wellsby stood up to the Sippy Tower. I don't know if you saw that, but he, he stared them down. Yeah, we showed courage. We're English, we're proud, and it's in our veins. And, you know, we don't do that what they do, but we have our own way of, of, of having spirit and, uh, and trying to epitomise that, you know. So it, the lads are angry about it and say we didn't win, really win and we didn't deserve it. They didn't know Mikey. All them comments, we spoke about it all week and that was a massive motivator for us and we want to we finish the job next week. Damian Johnson putting the questions to Sean Wayne uh, and you can watch that third match next Saturday afternoon on BBC One. So less than 90 minutes away from the Rugby Union World Cup final, Sonia McLaughlin is in Paris. And there's a real frisson of excitement here, Mark, that comes with a huge occasion. The white seats of the Stade de France changing hue as the fans make their way in in fine spirits despite the rain. There's rugby royalty everywhere you look. Martin Johnson, Matt Dawson, Bobby Skinstad, Andrew Mertens. And that's just in the Five Live commentary box. We've got a final for the ages. The two most successful teams in the history of this event colliding in rugby's global showpiece for the first time since 1995. Both have won the Web Ellis Trophy three times and one will make history with a fourth crown and with it the glory as the best team on the planet. It's New Zealand panache versus South African power. It's too close to call, but a fitting finale to this Rugby World Cup. So all the build-up to come at the conclusion of the second half at Molyneux. So uh, if you could keep it tight, Ali, very few Uh, VAR checks, it would help. Yeah, so I think we've... We've had enough of the lengthy VAR checks for today. Match the day tonight, BBC One at 10.20. You'll find out what we're talking about. The Wolves fans, Paul Robinson, still in very good voice. Anthony Taylor got roundly booed when he came out onto the pitch. Newcastle players roundly booed as well when they came out onto the pitch. Hopefully, second half will be as good as the first. Yeah, it was a decent game. Really good game. Two teams looking to win it and a really good atmosphere. Um, Wolves, probably rightly so, feel hard done to with the penalty decision. It was a tough one and they went down the other end and to most of the fans naked eye they thought they should have had a penalty for handball it, it clearly wasn't no. but the fans in the stadium haven't got the uh, the, the monitors in front of us like, like we have back underway then in the second half Wolves the home team trailing Newcastle 2-1 in the old gold shirts with black trim black shorts uh, and the old gold socks and Newcastle change kit this evening uh, bright green shirts white shorts uh, and green socks and Wolves already spy an attacking opportunity down the right Semedo's made good ground to the edge of the box not the best cross Lascelles side foots a volleyed clearance away Gimaraish strokes a pass out to Almiron back it comes to Trippier level with the edge of his own penalty area drills the ball downfield lovely measured pass actually for Almiron to chase but Craig Dawson saw it coming a long way off plays it back to his goalkeeper Jose So. it's a lovely pass back to Dawson to give him plenty of time to take control of the situation neither managers made a change at half time I'll remind you the two teams in just a second 
And as Mark was just saying, and Sonia was giving us the big build-up, Rugby Union World Cup final on the way. Eight o'clock kick-off tonight, South Africa against New Zealand in the Stade de France. Neto, who uh, actually got his seventh assist of the season, of course, for Wolves' goal in the first half, because it was uh, Lamina's header from his corner. Wide to Semedo, that's an easy clearance for Dan Byrne. Sticks his right foot through it, and the ball eventually just bounce out just for a throw into Wolves on the right they've got Jose Sarr in goal Semedo at right back uh, Totti Gomez at left back Kilman and Dawson the two centre backs uh, Neto wide right eight Nuri on the left Bubikar Traore alongside Mario Lamina in central midfield and then Mateus Cunha and Huang Hee Chan uh, as a front two Semedo moving forward for Wolves again lays it off to Neto Neto who's got the uh, sort of matching old gold undershirt the skin underneath the uh, the short sleeve wall shirt gets the ball at his feet and starts heading at pace towards the Newcastle area tricks it onto his left foot Dan Byrne trying to hold him off Neto strong enough to hold Byrne off but not only that wins a free kick in a really good position for Wolves 22 yards out say right in the middle of the pitch it was really well Neto looks really sharp makes inroads down this right hand side cuts in field all of a sudden starts causing Newcastle defenders problems and Sharon Byrne can't touch him all left footed cuts inside the pitch he's looking to get the shot away looking to get the shot away Byrne stays with him stays with him he does eventually get round him but he's fouled by Byrne Statman Day was telling us just how good Pedro Neto is in the Fantasy 606 podcast this week that's why he's sitting in his team don't think you got Eddie and Ketia in today. If you've done that in your fantasy football team, fair play to you. Arsenal beat Sheffield United by five goals to nil. Eddie and Ketia with a first Premier League hat trick. The Fantasy 606 podcast. There, if you want the BBC Sounds app, uh, a new one out uh, every Thursday. The Footballers Football podcast this week, I'm sure, will be a good listen. Callum Wilson and Mikhail Antonio both on that one, and Callum Wilson already with two goals in the bag tonight. Pedro Neto is going to try and make it 2-2 if he's the one to strike it. Could be Lamina, could be Neto. The whistle blows, the rain continues to fall. Neto with the left foot hits the top of the wall. It spins away to the left. Uh, Traore chases it for Wolves, keeps it in play and plays it back to Totti. Totti's closed down, just short of the halfway line inside the Newcastle half. Longstaff wins it. Suddenly Newcastle on the front foot. Almiron to Wilson. He's on the hat-trick. The angle's tight for him. Semedo's there. Semedo makes the tackle and knocks it out for a throw into Newcastle. Paul Robinson does really well there, Semedo. Tracks Callum Wilson all the way. Almiron wins ball back in midfield, puts it through one-on-one -on -one Callum Wilson. Semedo just puts his body between him and Callum Wilson. Puts it out for a throw-in on the far side, but that all stemmed from Neto's free kick. Just watching Neto's free kick here in front of us, the Newcastle wall was massive. Mm. He had to get it up and down, but you look at the players in that wall. It hit the top of the wall, and within three passes, Newcastle were in the Wolves box. I was just thinking, actually, when Newcastle were lining up before the game, the likes of Byrne, uh, Longstaff, Joa Linton in particular, the really big men in this Newcastle team. That's not including the two centre-backs, actually, Sharon Jamal Lascelles and the free kick was central and when that happens the goalkeeper tends to put the centre-halves into the wall you right. don't need them to pick up because the, the cross isn't coming in if you know there's going to be a direct shot on goal you put your biggest men into the wall and that's exactly what Nick Pope did and it paid dividends for him Jose Saar the goalkeeper at the other end chips it forward Wolves have it just inside their own half Traore to Cunha wide to eight Nuri Newcastle with Pope in goal Trippier, Lascelles, Cher and Byrne high ball which Dan Byrne heads away, but I think Neto will get to that first, nods it down to Semedo. Semedo followed by two Newcastle players out to the right, gets the better of both of them. One more touchdown by the byline, beats Joel Linton again for good measure, cross comes in, Longstaff heads it away, Neto tries to get on the end of it, but Almiron is there and clears. Longstaff, Gimmerich and Joel Linton as Newcastle's midfield three, Almiron and Gordon on the flanks with Callum Wilson through the middle. Five minutes gone in the second half, it's Wolves one, Newcastle 2 what have you spotted Paul? Max Kilman there he's come out in the second half and he's got an industrial style strapping on yeah. his left knee a really heavy knee he's not he's not moving comfortably at all yeah, Callum Wilson's that. pulled over to this side and he's looking to exploit that oh lovely touch to Cunha Cunha from Neto's pass couldn't quite beat Lascelles still Wolves have it though Traore sets himself up 25 yards out Newcastle get enough bodies in the way Almiron tries to hold off Traore really good physical battle Almiron's winning it for now and then Traore 
leans into him, leans into Almiron's back, knocks him over. Anthony Taylor says free kick. I think he's got that right, hasn't he, Paul? Well, the Wolves fans once again don't like it, but Almiron's done so well there. You know, he's only slight in body, but he's really, really strong on the ball. He gets the ball off Traore ricochets off his shins and he puts his ball he puts his body in between him and the ball and he runs it out of danger for Newcastle and Traore gets frustrated because he can't get around Almoron he's really strong there yeah he's got that slightly Almoron I always think he's, he's got that slightly sort of bendy bow-legged run he's wiry as well but he's tough as teak isn't he Almoron showed a lot of strength there Newcastle leading 2-1 five live and BBC Sounds two more Premier League commentaries on the way for you tomorrow West Ham Everton at one Manchester Derby at half three uh, three more commentaries at two o'clock tomorrow from the Premier League all available via the uh, the BBC Sport website and app as well Aston Villa Luton Brighton Fulham and Liverpool Nottingham Forest so whichever game you fancy tomorrow you can listen to it on the BBC and I tell you what there'll be goals tomorrow just yes. like today there's going to be plenty of goals on match of the day tonight but there will be goals tomorrow look uh, at those games I think there will Joa Linton sliding challenge by Lamina catches Joa Linton the Wolves fans are living once again I think there was ball and man in that challenge Lamina can't believe the decision's gone against him Pedro Neto comes over to complain we'll have a look on the monitor Paul that looks like a really good challenge to me. He gets in in front of Joe Linton and the Wolves fans are getting more and more frustrated with referee Anthony Taylor. And when he's giving decisions like that, you can see we've got a close-up of Gary O'Neill on the monitor now. He's trying to get his point across to the referee. He's made a bad decision there. It was a really, really good challenge by Lamina. Atmosphere bubbling away very nicely indeed inside Molyneux this evening. And uh, the rain is just not relenting. It seems to be getting heavier, if anything else. Looking forward to watching this young man come onto the field for Wolves 22 year old Tommy Doyle on loan from Manchester City one of, one of the best goals I saw scored last season was scored by him in an FA Cup quarter final against one of your former clubs actually Blackburn pulled by Tommy Doyle to win the quarter final by three goals to two Almiron's on the ball for Newcastle inside the Wolves penalty area tries to beat Dawson on the outside and his right footed effort goes right across the face of goal and all the way out for a throw into Wolves in their right back position works himself some really good space there on his so-called weaker right foot Almiron it was kind of a cross come shot they ended up going out for a throw in on this near side so Tommy Doyle is coming on Bubakar Traore uh, is coming off so that just gives Wolves possibly a little bit more creativity in that central midfield Doyle has made three substitute appearances so far in the Premier League for Wolves stepping it up a level this season part of that really impressive Sheffield United team last season Wolves have given it away from the throw Gordon's cut back cleared away by Kilman who's playing with this very heavy strapping around his left leg Huang controls on the right pass into midfield there's Doyle first touch is Shaw back to Dawson quickly on to Totti Totti wide to eight Nuri three green shirts in his way clever scoop pass over the top Cunha stabs it forward for eight Nuri good from Wolves cut back to the edge of the box here's Huang Huang holds off the challenge of Joe Linton then lays the pass off to Neto support on the outside from Semedo weak cross straight at Pope once again it's that quality in the final third for Wolves Semedo finds himself in a great position ten yards out from the byline he's got a free opportunity to cross it into the box and he puts it straight into Nick Pope's gloves Nine minutes gone in the second half. Clever turn from Anthony Gordon. Bought the challenge from Nelson Semedo. Definite foul. Free kick for Newcastle. If, if Newcastle do go on to win this game, Paul, and there's well over half an hour left in the game, uh, considering the week they've had, you know, lost to Borussia Dortmund at home on, on Wednesday and, and the players they've lost, it'll be some result for them again. It will be because, like you rightly said, with the lineup, there's only Callum Wilson that's a change and Callum Wilson played the majority of the game because of yeah. Isaac's injury and it's going to be a test on Eddie, Eddie Howe's squad this season but like I say, there's, there's half an hour to go, fatigue will set in, it's been a really, really good match, both teams going at it and it'll be interesting to see how they stay the pace. Another free kick has gone against Wolves, Max Kilman comes forward and I thought won the ball cleanly <laughs> Anthony Taylor is not making friends in I'll tell you what I'm you. glad I'm not giving him a lift home tonight I wouldn't want to walk out the stadium with him tonight <laughs> it is a foul actually Totti is dragging Almer on shirt a lot of fans won't have seen that I think the Wolves fans don't care actually even if the referee gets the decisions right he's going to get booed here come Wolves good skills from Cunha across the halfway line chased by Trippier Cunha keeps going then he goes down very theatrically and wins the free kick and Kieran Trippier turns to Anthony Taylor and says how on earth have you bought that one but a great chance for Wolves 
to curl a dangerous cross into the Newcastle penalty area. And, you, and as soon as Cunha went down there, you knew he was going to give the free kick. You knew he was, because he was right in the corner there in front of the Wolves fans. Not that that should sway the referee's decision, but I think Anthony Taylor was due one to give Wolves one, if you like. But he does really, really well, Cunha. Slightest of contact with Kieran Trippier. Goes down. There's a little bit of a tangle. He goes down, but it's a free kick in a really, really dangerous area. It's 10 yards outside the box between the 18-yard line and the byline. It's an opportunity for Wolves to deliver into the box and cause problems. Cunha desperately trying to win that free kick. Sort of bumps hip to hip with Trippier and then throws himself to the floor. There was contact. Anthony Taylor's given the free kick. Wolves won Newcastle 2 and Molyneux absolutely jumping as you can hear Tommy Doyle comes over to take the free kick level with that penalty spot it'll be a right footed in swing a whole line of players in the green shirts and the old gold and black queuing up inside the penalty area Doyle's delivery at pace into the near post where's the ball gone just so many bodies in the way eventually scrambled clear by Newcastle and there wasn't really a threat on Nick Pope's goal brilliant delivery by Tommy Doyle you could see what they were doing there Neto was initially stood over it with his left foot it was going to be an outswinger but it was praying for a right footer to stand there and whip it in behind that defence that's exactly what he did caused all kinds of confusion but unfortunately for Wolves it's been given offside yeah offside free kick for Newcastle so even if it had gone into the back of the net hang on we've got VAR monitor in front of us now because Callum Wilson's tried to head that ball away his right arm is by his side and it's possibly struck that right arm well Anthony Taylor so we're, we're looking at VAR checking that but actually Anthony Taylor's already had the all clear and we get the game back underway uh, Newcastle leading by two goals to one share just puts enough on the pass to get it past Cunha Trippier's ball up towards the halfway line Lamina beats Wilson to it now Huang 20 yards out central position tries to poke the pass to Neto on the right when he possibly could have hit the shot and Newcastle bring it away and look at Dan Byrne thundering forward down the left Gordon on the ball on the halfway line plays into central midfield Gimaraish Gimaraish side foots his pass to Trippier Trippier down the right to Almiron, back to Trippier and Newcastle slow it down and just take the sting out of it for the moment. Now here's Cher, right in the middle of the pitch. Forward to Joe Linton, back to Cher again. Cher across to Byrne. Burns ball down the left to Gordon. Gordon whips that back into the Newcastle half. Wolves fans appeal for a handball against Fabian Cher. Wolves fans appealing for anything, for anything at the moment, aren't they? Longstaff's <laughs> ball to the left. Nice build up from Newcastle. Joe Linton asking a lot of Anthony Gordon, but Gordon's got the pace to get there ahead of Semedo. Semedo backs off. Gordon gets the crossing with his right foot. Wilson on the hat trick, waiting in the middle, but Dawson heads it away. Huang tries to take the ball down on his right foot. Holds Longstaff off brilliantly. Looks for the pace of Neto. Neto's got the pace to get there ahead of Cher. Cher slides in and makes a really important intervention on the edge of the box. Behind it goes for a Wolves corner. You know, I noticed with Cher there, his positional sense is excellent. He knows that Neto's got the speed to get around him. He knows that he can't catch him. But as soon as I saw that happen, Cher looked. He didn't look at the player. He looked at the space that he needed to get to. And he drove into that space where he'd given the opportunity to make the tackle. He didn't go one-on-one -on -one with Neto because he knew he couldn't keep up with him. He ran into the space and made the tackle. Brilliant defending. That's the voice of former England goalkeeper Paul Robinson. Wolves 1, Newcastle 2. Corner for Wolves. Right in front of us on the Wolves' right flank. Neto goes short into the feet of Huang. Back to Neto. First time ball with the left foot. High swinging, spinning ball to the far post. Brilliantly brought down by Ait Nuri. Tries to get his cross in. Couple of deflections and the ball bobbles into the arms of Nick Pope. We're approaching the last half hour of the game. Newcastle still leading by two goals to one. As Paul was saying, match of the day tonight, well worth a watch. BBC One 10 20. See what you think about the, uh, the penalty decision that Newcastle were given to get them 2 1 in front. Uh, the, uh, the supposed contact from Huang on Cher. Newcastle attacking down the left. Ball at Gordon's feet, teasing Semedo. Finds Gimaraish in the inside left channel. 25 yards out, Gimaraes trots in field, plays it back out to Gordon. It's just slowed down for a second here. Now Burn, Burn to Gimaraes, across the Wolves half it goes to Lascelles. Lascelles strokes his pass to Trippier. Trippier tries to thread one through, intercepted. Here's Cunha. Cunha bringing it forward for Wolves. Joe Linton comes back, tries to drag him back. Pass in behind Huang. Anthony Taylor wanted to blow the whistle, continues to play the advantage. Neto bringing it in from the right flank. Dances away from Joe Linton. Pass back to young Tommy Doyle. Doyle. Pacey pass to Semedo. Wide it goes to Huang. 
Wang up against Gordon, drags him in field, lays it back to Semedo, first time cross, easy one for Cher to head away, up in the air it goes, Totti wins the next header, Gordon's there, heads it back across the edge of his own box, Gimaraes chests it down, Gimaraes thumps it forward, Wilson gives chase but it goes out for a Wolves throw. Paul Robinson. There's an example of the real pace that Wolves have got in this side. They're quite happy to let Newcastle have possession, but when they do spring the trap, they do win it back. You look at Huang, you look at Cunha, Neto, they've got pace on the counter-attack and that's how they're looking to cause Newcastle problems. Newcastle now at this stage of the game, after we spoke so often about the Champions League game midweek, they're looking to take this thing out of the game. I'm surprised that Eddie Howe's not looked at substitutions already. Joe Linton just going down there, feeling the effects of you know late on in the game. I don't think it will long before we see Eddie Howe change it up. Newcastle bench tells you everything about the injury problems at the moment. Two goalkeepers on there, Dubravka and Gillespie. Five full-backs as well. Here's Cunha. Cunha's caused Newcastle's defenders all sorts of problems running at them this evening. Laser pass off to Semedo. Semedo has to make tracks back to the halfway line to gather it. Kilman plays into the heart of midfield. Doyle clips the pass out to Aitnuri, tries to control it, slides off his boot, and it goes out for a throw-in. But on the bench, they've got Dummett target Kraft who's not played a game this season the summer signings Lewis Hall and Tino Livramento if you wanted to go six fullbacks Matt Ritchie's played fullback as well and Joe Willock uh, on the bench so they they are they are properly stretched at the moment Newcastle Joe Linton stretches a leg out Kilman beats him to the ball Joe Linton's flat on his back not sure how much longer he's going to be out there for Newcastle as Paul was saying Eight Nuri thinks about a back heel on the halfway line then goes for it caught Fouled by Gimaraes. Free kick for Wolves. We've not had a yellow card in the game yet, have we? No, I'm not saying there should have been one, actually, though, necessarily. No, the referees, I mean, he's, he's lost control of it a couple of times if you ask the Wolves players and the Wolves fans. Um, but there hasn't been that many incidents that have required yellow cards in this game. Four wide to Semedo. Just over an hour away from kickoff in the Stade de France. Full commentary of South Africa, New Zealand in the Rugby Union. World Cup final tonight Craig Dawson with the outside of his right boot cushions a lovely pass to Kilman who's not moving easily back there that's a pass that's going to test him and he does well but he's hobbling every time he it seems fine when he's in the action pool then he stops and then he looks like he's in a bit of bit of trouble plays it back to Dawson Dawson to Semedo plays it into uh, open space in the Wolves half Doyle runs onto it Pass to eight, Nuri, back into Doyle, in the middle of the Newcastle half, forward to Semedo, Semedo stretches, can't quite control that, Joa Linton's there, facing his own goal, does well, plays it forward to Gordon, good ball from Gordon, Callum Wilson chases, Wilson pretty much on his own, Almiron trying to get up there with him, Wilson into the penalty area, Wilson, right-footed pass, intercepted by Kilman, just didn't have enough support to find a teammate. Wolves clearance, fabulous one onto the chest of Neto. Wolves fans excited as you can hear. Go streaking past Dan Byrne into the box. Byrne slides in, cross deflected, touch taken by Cunha. Pope comes out, gets his body in the way and the ball spins up and Pope makes a clean catch. Does well Nick Pope, spreads himself, makes it difficult for Cunha to get the ball across the box. His first touch just puts him too close to the onrushing goalkeeper. Pope spreads himself, makes himself a really big starfish shape. Makes the save, goes up in the air and catches the rebound. Newcastle getting deeper and deeper, mm. looking in possession. They're looking like a, not a boxer on the ropes, but they're looking tired, aren't they? Wolves are having more and more possession, Newcastle deeper and deeper. And they're looking to use the out ball to Callum Wilson when they're in possession. Wolves won, Newcastle two. Talking boxing, fight tonight in, in Riyadh. Sounds like some event. Heard Steve Bunce talking to Mark Chapman earlier on today. Tyson Fury uh, against Francis Unganu. Uh, the, uh, the Five Live Boxing Podcast for all your reaction to that tomorrow morning and the BBC Sport website for the live text uh, during the fight. Here's Gimaraes. Gimaraes digs his right foot under the ball. A load of spray of water comes up as he plays the pass high out to the right. Trippier infield to Longstaff. Trippier involved again. Back towards Pope. Awkward one for him. Just gets his thighs in the way of the ball to control it. Flip pass from Cher out to Byrne. Newcastle still leading by two goals to one with just over 25 minutes to play plus a bit of added time. Yeah, you can see Eddie Howe talking there to Jason Tindall and you can see him looking at his team getting deeper and deeper. I mean, what, we're 65 minutes into the game and you can see him now thinking that he wants to make a change. He'll be very happy with the way that the game's gone, the way that his team have played. But he's got to work out now how he gets to that 90, 95 minute mark and what substitutions, if any, that he needs to make. As you rightly say, you look at that bench, there's not a lot of people who are going to come off that and change the game. Pedro Neto's gone down off the ball. Lamina's bringing it forward for Wolves, running across the Newcastle half 
far from left to right, and then Anthony Taylor <laughs> eventually blows the whistle. He's gone from giving them nothing to giving <laughs> them everything. <laughs> Tell you what, though, I mean, this this is in shooting range. I think on a wet night like tonight, we saw the handling error from Jose Sar in the first half. I would say 27 yards out inside right channel. This is one I'd used to hate as a goalkeeper on a night like this because it's so far out. If you put the wall there, people are looking at you go, why are you having a wall there? And then you don't put a wall there and he skids it in front of you. It's a really, really horrible distance. Did, um, you, did you ever go without the wall, Paul? You very rarely see that, do you? Oh, in training, you do it all the time right. because you'd back yourself all day long from 20, 25 yards. There's, you, you, they'd score one out of ten but if you put a wall there you give them a target to go up and over yeah. you stand at the other half of the goal but it takes a brave goalkeeper to go without it yeah I suppose it does but as you say there according to the numbers if you're going to back yourself you you possibly should let's see what happens here Pope's gone without one he's gone without a wall exactly what we're just talking about touch short to Neto couple of touches scoop ball into the box Pope comes and claims it at the far post couple of walls attackers trying to get on the end of that Newcastle survive that attack Wolves 1 Newcastle 2 if I had players as big as the Newcastle players in front of me <laughs> those two centre-halves I'd be building a wall for every free kick believe me Lascelles plays the ball back to share Premier League results today in case you missed them Arsenal beat Sheffield United by five goals to nil Brentford 2-0 winners at Chelsea in the early kickoff, and Bournemouth beat Burnley by two goals to one their first win of the season to take them out of the bottom three flip pass from Trippier down the right he appeals for handball not given Wolves looking dangerous again on the counter Huang caught there by Joa Linton referee Anthony Taylor wants to play the advantage and does so here's Neto Neto on the right three green shirts around him Nutmegs Gordon still going bringing the ball in field turns away from Longstaff holds him off and then lays it off to Semedo continues his run Neto Semedo dummies the cross on the right right underneath our noses in the commentary position here at Molyneux and still the the rain is relentless here Wolves 1 Newcastle 2 Tommy Doyle goes chasing a ball across the halfway line leaves it to Totty Doyle gets it back again very happy to control things young Doyle from the base of midfield playing it forward here to Cunha Cunha wants eight Nuri to make the run on the left he does that plays it back to Cunha Cunha bounces off a couple of defenders great run down to the left looking for the cutback sliding block was a really good one by Gimaraes Cunha chests it down on the byline lobs it back in then Byrne heads it away Lamina shoots Byrne was fouled as he headed the ball clear shot took a deflection Pope saved it anyway Wolves fans complaining that they don't think Byrne was fouled I think he was wasn't he Paul oh that's an absolutely fantastic defensive header from Dan Byrne he's no idea what's behind him I think it's Semedo comes in to try and challenge him for the header but Bernie's he's just focused on the ball and it's a fantastic header Semedo comes in clatters into him it's clearly a foul it's really really brave defending it's it's a horrible situation as a goalkeeper or a defender you're traveling backwards you're going you're taking one two steps back and jumping and you don't know what's behind and you're just waiting for the impact but Dan Byrne went through with it and he got a great header on the ball Wolves won Newcastle two an hour away from kickoff in the Stade de France South Africa against New Zealand uh, in the Rugby Union World Cup final tonight Nick Pope clears with his right foot Pope's clearance headed away by Craig Dawson back into the Wolves half it goes forward by eight Nuri Huang chasing it Lascelles fouls him that might be a red card denial of a goal scoring opportunity no only a yellow card given by Anthony Taylor while we tidy this up let's take you live to Paris Chris Jones will give you the build up to the big one on five live tonight Chris nightfall in Paris Ali the rain had relented but it started again a very damp night at the Stade de France for what is one of the biggest rugby union matches in history the two greatest rugby world cup nations South Africa and New Zealand going head to head for the sport's biggest prize and we are now under an hour away can't wait you can't give it a better sell than that the coverage of all the games in the rugby union world cup from the five live sport team has been absolutely fantastic i highly recommend you have a listen to that that's what paul and i are going to be doing in the car uh, on the way home this evening now what about that decision there paul yellow card for the cells i think he's got away with it because of the wet pitch the ball skidded through to nick pope and before the impact as actually the two players have hit the ground the ball's in the goalkeeper's arms it's a great ball over the top from eight nori huang gets the wrong side of lascelles lascelles just puts his arm round huang pulls him down but nick pope's already holding the ball which i think is why he's got away with a, just the yellow 
So Lascelles booked for that. Miguel Almiron booked for back chat a few moments ago as well. Two yellow cards for Newcastle. They still lead by two goals to one. Neto's free kick chipped up towards the far post. Pope opts to have a punch at that. Gets a good fist on the ball. Clears it a long way out. Wolves trying to pick up the bits and pieces. Totti in the right wing position. Lamina makes the run on the outside. Oh, Brazilian skills. Portuguese skills, I should say. From Totti. Great ball to Wang. Wang! Oh, scores for Wolves! He's done it again at Molyneux! Fabulous skills from Totti to tee him up. But the coolness and calmness under pressure from Huang to whip it back onto the left foot, roll it past Nick Pope into the bottom corner. That goal was coming. Wolves deserve it. It's Wolves 2, Newcastle 2. Two pieces of absolute individual brilliance from Wolves coming together to create the goal for Juan. Totti finds himself in this right wing position, like you say, great footwork, cuts into the box and he slips the ball through to Huang, who you think he's going to hit it, for all the world you think he's going to hit it first time, but no, he cuts it back onto his left foot and he drags it into near Nick, Pope's, Nick Pope's near post. It's a fantastic finish, Totti's footwork and his ability to get him into that position. Beats three Newcastle players, slips in one with his left foot, touches it inside, with the same foot, drags it into the near post of Nick Pope. Two all, we've got a game on. Seventh goal of the season for the South Korean Huang. He has scored in his last six home games in the Premier League. So that matches John Richards back in 1973. The last man to do that for Wolves uh, in the top flight. And Totti Gomez looking like Francesco Totti with the uh, with the skills on the ball to tee Huang up. That was absolutely brilliant. Check that out on Match of the Day tonight. Newcastle have made a change, Paul. Joe Willock's on for Miguel Almiron. Yeah, a change that's been coming. Joe Linton and Almiron, you wondered which one would come off first. But those two individual pieces of skill for the goal, they were incredible. I mean, the piece of skill from Totti to get in that position. But Juan, what he does, he doesn't cut back with one foot and finish with the other. You think he's going to hit it with his right foot. He uses the outside of his left foot to cut back and then in an instant he whips it in goal with the inside of his left foot fantastic footwork from both players a great goal 18 minutes plus added time remaining great game tonight on 5 Live and BBC Sounds with the Rugby Union World Cup final still to come as well Wolves 2 Newcastle 2 we saw Huang do that in the first half in terms of a similar skill his, his change of direction in a in a a, a very short space of time, but also in the tiniest of spaces just physically inside the penalty area is really, really impressive. Well, it's the speed of his feet, but it's the speed of his feet with the ball at his feet yeah. and his ability to move his body at the same time. I mean, you watch that goal tonight on match of the day, it really is an unbelievable piece of footwork. Balls with Nick Pope just outside his penalty area. Plays it to Fabian Scher. Gimmer Reich, Huang comes barging into it. And that's a free kick for Newcastle. Wolves fans again on Anthony Taylor's back. I don't think they can have too many arguments with that one. Longstaff takes it. Are we going to get a winner? Lascelles looking for the run of Callum Wilson into space on the right-hand side. Wilson chases. It's played back to Jose Saar. Kilman inside his own penalty area. Pass is intercepted by Dan Byrne. Looking for the one-two with Gordon. Gordon thinks he was caught on the edge of the box. Stays down. No free kick given. Wolves come on the counter. Neto away from Longstaff. If he fouls him there, that's a yellow card. Couldn't get hold of his shirt. Oh, Ooh. hamstring's gone for Neto. Neto was about to oh. pull the trigger on the edge of the box. And then he's gone down, hobbling and clutching the back of his right leg. But Wolves continue to play here with Neto flat on his back in the box. Cunha crosses. That goes behind for a goal kick. That is a massive, massive blow for Wolves. And that is a very sad sight to see. Ali, I've never seen that before. I've seen people's hamstring go, but not in that position. The amount of times, listen, for, for those of you listening, you, you see people's hamstring go, they're in full stride and you just see the hamstring ping and they stop. But Neto did this, he does what he does at best, cuts inside, he's in full flow. He's just about to pull the trigger on the edge of the box and he stops and you're thinking, what's happened, what's he done? And then you realise that it's his hamstring. So often do you see sprinters and wingers, you see people's hamstrings go and they stop and you can see what's happened, but not in that position. That's a bad one. Oh, that's a real worry for Wolves. It's a real shame. He, is, he has been spellbinding at times this season, Pedro Neto. He's their best player, isn't he, by miles? He is, isn't yeah. He? It's most creative, Paul. Seven assists so far this season. He is distraught, you can see. We've got the camera close up. He's being shielded by the medical team as well. If, if possible, if at all possible, the rain has got even heavier <laughs> in the last couple of minutes as well. And Rob, our producer, is pointing out that the 
the dugout here at Wolves actually isn't big, it, big enough so that the shelter bit, Paul, isn't big enough for the entire backroom staff. There's eight of them out there getting absolutely soaked to the skin. Well, there's, there's more staff these days than players, isn't there? The teams travel away with so many members of staff. They have to put an extra dugout by the side of the dugout. And I'm not sure there's much cover in the actual dugout because it is absolutely scything down. Yeah, it really is now. Teaming down and poor old Pedro Neto. Certainly out of this game but hamstring injury as well you just wonder how long he's going to be out for but you, you see Wolves today and you see everything that they do I spoke before in the first half about that diagonal that they look for with Semedo and Neto on the right hand side every time they have good possession in this second half whether it's Juan in the middle whether it's Doyle whether it's Lamina their first look is out to the right for Neto he's that good everything good that Wolves do go through him whether it's on this left hand side he cuts in tries to get the shot away tries to create you can see him there, he's still got his head in his hands. He's in a lot of pain, that's a bad one, that's his hamstring gone. Half an hour gone in the second half, 15 minutes remaining. There's going to be a fair bit of added time as well. The stretcher has now arrived for Pedro Neto. He is able to sort of lever himself into position. But you can see, understandably, how disappointed he is. Because you know as well, don't you, Paul? We're all saying he's in the form of his life. But if you're, if you're in the form of your life, you know it as well. This is your time. And, and the career, I know, I know we're not talking career ending with me, but the career is a short one and you want to be out there as much as you can. Absolutely. When you're playing that well, you want to play week in and week out. You want to play twice, three times a week. Um, and he, he is he's pivotal to everything that they do. And the worrying thing is, as, as bad as it looks, the length of time that he's going to be out. You know, there was a lot of talk before the season started that there isn't the finances at this football club to go out and buy players. There was no huge transfer window spending. So if their main player is going to be out well beyond January, what can Gary O'Neill do? You know, how can he shuffle this squad? What can he do in January to replace him? Because at the moment, he's irreplaceable. No consolation to Pedro Neto, I'm sure. The stretcher now uh, being levered onto the trolley and he will slowly uh, be pushed around the pitch in front of us. Uh, heading towards the uh, the dressing rooms here at Molyneux, standing ovation for him uh, all around the ground. Really sad sight to see. A real change as well for Wolves because the change they've made Neto off, uh, Sasha Kalajic, uh, the giant Austrian centre-forward, who has got a couple of important late goals for Wolves this season. Uh, he is on, Kalajic. He is a giant as well, He's isn't he? I've just caught a glimpse of him. He's yeah. huge. Very, very different player to Neto. Obviously won't play wide right. Huang out to the right. Uh, Kalajic through the middle. He wears number 18 and you can hear the applause now. So the Wolves fans around us getting to their feet. We can see Pedro Neto flat on his back, arms across his face. Uh, he is absolutely devastated to be leaving the action. 2-2 between Wolves and Newcastle. Gimaraj side foots a pass uh, out to the right. Longstaff takes a touch, tackled by Totti, and the ball goes behind for a Newcastle corner. Still plenty of football to be played tonight. Just taking the shine off the game a little bit, that hasn't yeah. it? It's a little bit of a, a low come round, Molyneux. The, uh, the atmosphere was fantastic before that, but the break in the game and their injury to their to the most creative, to their best player, it's, it's just gone quiet a little bit. Yeah, it wind out the sails, hasn't it? It has, Paul, yeah. Uh, Kalajic, of course, late winner last weekend, was one of the winners at, uh, at Bournemouth. Bournemouth got caught playing out from the back and Kalajic finished it very, very nicely. Defending for Wolves to do now. Newcastle corner, it's an away swinger. Flicked header from Kilman. And out of the penalty area it goes. Ball is played back by Cher to Longstaff. Longstaff drives the diagonal. Trippi is up to win a header. His header goes to the edge of the Wolves box. Doyle is there, chests it down, thumps it away on the half volley. 12 minutes plus added time remaining. Rain drumming down furiously in the West Midlands. Wolves 2, Newcastle 2. Almost immediately there, Wolves have sacrificed possession and Newcastle seem to have picked up the button, if you like. They've, they've gained possession and they look to have a spring back in their step. Might lose it inside their own half here. Good battling. Uh, in the end from Gimaraes to keep it back it comes to share Gimaraes back on his feet moves into that midfield position gets away from Kalajic back to share across to Byrne Byrne's closed down by Huang who never stops running for Wolves and here's Cher just trotting forward 
his dark green shirt soaked through sees space and keeps going good run plays the pass into Joa Linton Joa Linton touch and turn finds Trippier on the right Trippier stands the ball up to the far post they're all attacking it headed down and wide and that was a really good chance for Newcastle Cher continuing the run having started the move could have finished it I think it was his own player Callum Wilson that got in his way ball goes out to the right hand side to trip and he stands it up at the far post and it's Callum Wilson and Cher I think Cher's coming in to head the ball and it's Callum Wilson in front of him that just puts him off Cher timed the run quite beautifully 10 minutes remaining Wolves 2 Newcastle 2 he said his dad was a rugby union fan Paul is he a cricket fan as well yeah very much so ok India England tomorrow I know that's from England's point of view is, is game's it up rubber, isn't it? Yeah, well, it, no from England's point of view out of the World we're Cup done, are we? yeah, yeah. Yeah. and I think with the Nether I think I heard Mark saying with the Netherlands win today against Bangladesh I think England have gone to the bottom uh, of the table ball through for Newcastle uh, to chase Wilson trying to get on the end of it so was Joe Willock as well Wolves have dealt with it here's Tommy Doyle game's getting very open in the closing stages here Doyle's pass to Cunha Cunha to his left finds Totti wide it goes to Eight Nuri Anthony Gordon now wide right for Newcastle Willock on the left Callum Wilson through the middle Gimmarais looking uh, a little jaded I would say in central midfield as soon as I say that though he bursts into a sprint to try and cut off a pass from Kilman. Kilman sees that avenue closing and plays back uh, across to Dawson Dawson with the outside of his right foot stabs it forward for Doyle Doyle not enough on the pass Trippier comes in hard on eight Nuri that is a foul that is a yellow card that is a free kick for Wolves yeah just missed times that one Trippier I think with the pitch the way that it is player sliding in quite often looks worse than it is the referee was right on top of it there just catches eight Nuri before the ball comes in Paul Robinson with us here at uh, Molyneux into the last 10 minutes of this Premier League commentary. Five Live in BBC Sounds, Wolves 2, Newcastle 2, West Ham Everton on Five Live tomorrow kicks off at uh, 1 o'clock. At half three we've got full commentary of the, uh, the Manchester derby. John Murray and Chris Waddle with you for that one. Kalajic chases the long ball for Wolves back to Pope. Pope very calmly and precisely plays it forward to Cher Cher gets it out to Trippier back to Lascelles Lascelles clears first time and Totti heads it away we've also got the Mexican Grand Prix in full for you tomorrow night coverage starts at 7.45 so in between the end of the football uh, and the Mexican Grand Prix Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage will be there for you tomorrow uh, to take the calls on 6.06 and all the two o'clock kickoffs at Villa Luton Brighton Fulham Liverpool Nottingham Forest Paul Robinson has promised us goals you can choose whichever one you want to listen to they're online available via the BBC Sport website and app but actually you're right Paul if, if those three games all end nil-nil I'll give you the money myself. <laughs> they can't yeah, I can't see it there's no. goals all over tomorrow Should you look be. at the teams that are playing uh, Willock on as a substitute for Newcastle Eddie Hale will be delighted to have him back given the current situation with the squad getting stretched his ball is intercepted Lascelles is there plays a hopeful ball forward intercepted by Lamina still 2-2 closing stages Lamina oh he's struggling as well now he's pulled up Lamina has stopped running ball still in play Huang on the right back to Semedo Semedo to Kilman who's got the heavily strapped left leg so he's struggling as well Lamina's picking it up again so he's going to stay out there for now Gary O'Neill will keep an eye on that here is Lamina on the ball finds Eight Nuri. Eight Nuri tries to turn away from Trippier good tackle from Trippier has to be careful now on the yellow card but knew he was going to win the ball and won it well Gordon slaloming from the right hand side gets the uh, pass back edge of the box might fall for Willock nearly tackled in the box is tackled and Wolves are able to bring it away you do feel there might be there might just be another goal in the game here well it's so teams. open now isn't it it's two teams Wolves really are missing Neto on this right hand side because it's their out ball they're looking lost when they look up when they're in possession they've got no plan B if you like when they're coming forward they've brought Juan out to this side but he's not the same type of player Newcastle are growing in confidence coming into this game and with Willock coming on now he's on the ball on his left hand side yeah Willock edge of the box finds Joe Linton he's falling backwards as he crosses the cross hits Kilman the two of them battle for the ball Kilman's got his arms around Joe Linton he holds him off plays it back to Dan Burn. he's inside the Wolves penalty hits the right footed shot he opened up for him didn't get any power on it and hits it straight at Jose Sarr and we've got Joe Linton down here in the corner Jose Sarr just kicked the ball out there's two or three players down now Lamina's down in the middle holding his hamstring looks like he's got cramp Joe Linton's gone down Kilman's gone down with his huge strapping on we've got a rugby match after this you know do they know that? <laughs> Yeah, Rugby Union World Cup final on the way. Don't miss that. New Zealand against South Africa. Joao Gomez is getting ready to come on. I presume that will be for Lamina because he was the one struggling for Wolves. If you have just tuned in, 
Uh, sad news for Wolves. Pedro Neto off with a hamstring injury, having added another assist to the tally tonight. This is Wolves 2, Newcastle 2. In terms of the football coming your way this week uh, across the network, we're into the Carabao Cup fourth round. So uh, the ties this week are playing for a place in the quarterfinals. A couple of games on Tuesday night. We've got full commentary on Exeter against Middlesbrough. Uh, six games Wednesday night. West Ham Arsenal kicks off at half seven. That's full commentary on Five Live. Commentary on Manchester United. Newcastle will start on Sports Extra. Lamina comes off and Joao Gomez uh, comes on. Gary O'Neill trying to get the attention of Eight Nuri here. What message is he trying to Eight Nuri's not playing a blind bit. Oh, he's got him now. I think, well, he's, he's wandering around on the halfway line and his team have got possession in, in their own box. Yeah, I think Gary O'Neill's trying to say to him, get back to left back. Yeah. Right, play back underway. Joe Linton stayed out there. Lamina off, Joao Gomez on. Wolves 2, Newcastle 2. And straight off to the Stade de France uh, after the game. Kalajic heads the ball to his right. Dan Byrne dummies a clearance. Let's the ball run out of play. And that'll be a throw-in for Newcastle on the left. They've been resilient, Newcastle. I've been impressed with them. They've dug deep when they've had to. Said it was going to be a challenge for them today with players missing. Most players would have to play 90 minutes against a decent Wolves side undefeated in four before this game. When Newcastle conceded, went to two all, they showed a lot of character and they've come back into this game because it was quite easy for them to fold. But they've got some leaders out there. They've come back into the game, they've put the ball forward and they've looked the most likely in the last five minutes. Standing water gathering all around the uh, the outside of the pitch here on the sort of uh, red grass surface see the cameramen and the ball boys and those uh, wool staff that I mentioned absolutely soaked through Lascelles cross to Cher Cher inside his own half forward to Gimmarais back to Lascelles Cunha closing it down for Wolves tireless effort from him and Huang in the forward positions Cross to Cher again. Cher at walking pace, looking for runners ahead of him, unless he just decides to do it on his own again, and that's what he starts doing. Wide to Willock. Willock's ball intercepted by Kilman, cleared. Up to Joa Linton, and now Gimmarais finds the ball at his feet, and he's running diagonally from left to right across the halfway line. Bobbling pass finds Trippier. Trippier towards Gordon. Little step over from Gordon. Goes out for a Newcastle throw. Trippier takes it quickly to Lascelles. Lascelles across to Cher. Joe Willock moving into position wide on the left to receive this pass from Cher. Eddie Howe urging his team forward. Gimmer Reich to Willock again. Right on that left-hand touchline. Knocks the ball past Huang. Huang continues to chase him. Willock beats him down to the byline. Knocks it through Huang's legs. But Huang is there to get on the ball. Now he's under pressure down by the corner flag in the right-back position. Does really well. Hits the clearance into Willock and behind it goes for a goal kick. Nobody's wanted to put the ball at risk in that final third now. We're entering that stage of the game where neither team want to lose the game. Yes, they'll push forward and they'll try and win the game, but nobody wants to lose possession. Nobody wants to make that final pass and put the ball at risk that might just give you that edge. Callum Wilson gave Newcastle the first half lead. That was the mistake from Jose Sarr. Mario Lamina, his first goal for Wolves with the equaliser from the Neto corner, diving header at the far post. Then the debatable penalty in added time at the end of the first half. Nearly saved by Jose Sarr. That was Wilson's second goal of the game. And Huang, goal of the night you'd have to say actually. Totti's skill to set it up. And Huang's little chop to create the chance and then bury it has got us at 2-2. We're in the 89th uh, minute of the game. Monsoon-like conditions uh, at Molyneux. Throw in from Trippier, skids across the wet pitch. Wilson tries to hold it up for Newcastle. Wolves clear, it falls to Cunha. Cunha wants a runner on the right-hand side. That's where Neto would normally be. Tries to slide the pass through. Kalajic looking for Huang. Intercepted by Lascelles. Lascelles pass out to the left. Finds Cher. Cher down the line to Willock. Just chips the ball into Cher's path. Good play by Newcastle. Gimaraish picks up the running. Challenged by Schwal Gomez. No foul, says Anthony Taylor. Tired Newcastle legs back pedalling. 
Wolves sense an opportunity so Al Gomez running forward flicks the ball to Huang Huang inside the penalty area angles tight for Cunha hits the shot Joel Linton blocks corner for Wolves well, Gilmore Rice is absolutely raging he's followed the referee all the way back from the halfway line he's absolutely convinced that he and Newcastle should have a free kick Wolves nick the ball they go into the Newcastle box win the self a corner they have a 5 on 5 situation but at this stage in the game it's not what Newcastle would want Post-match reaction to the game and analysis in the Football Daily podcast available for you on the BBC Sounds app. Is it going to finish 2-2? Tommy Doyle's corner into the near post, headed away by Longstaff. Semedo, the ball bounces in front of him, lofts it back into the box. Kalajic controls, tries to turn and hold off defenders, goes tumbling with the cells behind him. Kalajic really trying to win the penalty here. Not much in that, I don't think. Anthony Taylor not interested. Eight minutes of added time remaining. Definitely time for a win. A good sliding challenge by Dawson on Wilson. That's a throw in for Newcastle in an attacking position on the right. So, my watch tells me 23 minutes past seven. Add eight minutes takes you to 7.31. You're going to have half an hour or so's build up to the Rugby Union World Cup final. Martin Johnson, part of the team, it's on the way here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Throw in, taken. Gordon tries to get the cross in. Wolves win the goal kick. And Jose Sarr just holds the ball in both hands and it's going to take a little while to get the game back underway. I think the, the way the game's finishing, I think um, Gary O'Neill will be happy of the two managers if it stays like this. Eddie Howe, yes, will be delighted with his team, with the spirit that they've showed, with the effort that they've put in. But as the game's gone on, Newcastle have looked the more likely in the second half. And I think if Gary O'Neill comes away from this with a point with his team after trailing, he'll be very pleased. But saying that, Wolves are on the attack now. Yes, Huang got the ball at his feet. Cunha making the run outside him. Good defending from Fabian Cher. Cunha tried to knock it past him. Cher stuck a leg out and blocked it to Gimaraes. Gimaraes, brilliant first-time ball to Willock on the left. Cunha comes back chasing for Wolves. Tommy Doyle's come across as well. Willock looking for a green-shirted teammate. Joa Linton to Gimaraes. Newcastle have switched it quickly to the right-hand side. Trippier's got... Longstaff outside him, Trippier wants an option, that is Longstaff, there's the cross, diving header from Totti, Longstaff wants it to go out for a corner, Eight Nuri prevents that, slides in, clears with his left foot, throw in for Newcastle, Trippier takes it quickly, into Gordon, clever turn from Gordon, Gordon heading for the byline, tackle on him, corner this time for Newcastle. A lot of tired bodies out there. This is where concentration kicks in as well. You work hard on set pieces all week. You work hard on structure. But just one switch off from one player here could cost your team. A real opportunity now for Newcastle. They're, re- they're loading the box. Still got six minutes of added time. Plenty can happen in that time. Wolves two, Newcastle two. Corner to come in from the right. Trippier drills it into that penalty area. Shot from Wilson, left-footed, blocked on the goal line. Back it comes out to Trippier again, just stands the ball up, high one to the far post, headed back across goal. Kalajic is there using his height to head it away for Wolves. Gordon, side foot's a pass. Back here to Byrne, Byrne, lovely ball out to the left. Fabian Scher is there, one touch from him onto the right foot, scuffs the shot, blocked at the near post. And Scher, tired legs of Scher, wants that to go behind for a corner. Tommy Doyle helps him out, sticks a right boot on it. Another corner for Newcastle. A couple of really nice opportunities for Newcastle there. They're not afraid to put the ball in the box. They've got the centre-halves up there. They've got the height in there. Kieran Trippier delivered that corner, came in at shoulder. How he fizzed it across the six-yard box. Callum Wilson heads it back across. Right, corner Newcastle to come in from the left. Pretty much every single outfield player, bar a couple, are inside the Wolves' six-yard box. So Trippier is just going to try and put it in there with pace and hope that Newcastle get the crucial touch. Here it comes. Higher one to the far post. Saar stretches, gets a fist on it. What can Wolves do on the counter? Lob ball. Huang goes sprinting after it. Inside his own half is Longstaff. Longstaff really measured pass with his left foot. Wide to Trippier on the left. Trippier switches play quickly to Lascelles inside the centre circle. We played three and a half minutes of added time we've got four and a half minutes still to go and it's still 2-2 really good piece of goalkeeping from Jose Sarr there a routine punch but not in this weather as you say it's monsoon conditions Newcastle there they loaded the six yard box with a load of bodies they put everybody in there and Kieran Trippier whipped it underneath the crossbar a really really difficult one for the goalkeeper to judge and deal with in this condition but he came out he was confident he got a punch on it and he cleared the box Willock wide on the left, 10 yards inside the Wolves' half, looking for an option. Kalajic comes sliding in to intercept the pass. Wang with a neat touch, plays it back to Semedo. Semedo chips it up to Kalajic, nods it down. Wang tries to 
player back to Kalajic. Burns there to block it. Now it goes for a throw in. Coming into this game, Wolves were unbeaten in four Premier League games. Newcastle unbeaten in five, having won four of the five and scored 15 goals in the process of gaining those wins. Two good teams have gone head to head here, Paul Robinson. Yeah, they really have. And that just gives us a little indication of which manager is happier with a point. Gary O'Neill went to chase the ball there and then he realised there was four minutes left and his team have a point. He turned around and quickly allowed the ball to run on a little bit further. Dan Burns missed the header from the throw, shares behind him, chests it down, launches it high in the air. Wilson can't bring it down. Joel Linton tries to use his strength to hold off Joao Gomez. The ball stays in play. There is Burn, volleys it with his left foot. Longstaff underneath it, heads it back to Gimmerreich. He almost slips under pressure from Cunha, but plays it back to Lascelles. Three minutes of the game remaining. Wolves two, Newcastle two. Lascelles creeping forward. Longstaff to his right. What a Newcastle player is going to have left for that League Cup game against Manchester United on Wednesday. There'll be changes for sure. Gordon barged over. Play continues. Trippier back to Longstaff. Little pass infield to Gimmerreich. Gimmerreich stumbles, needs to break play up there. Can't do so. Kalajic brings it away. Kalajic, big long legs, take him across the halfway line. Cunha almost taking too long there. Delays the pass. Well, Gomez is fouled. Cunha was fouled. Wolves do get the free kick in the end on the halfway line. All getting a little bit scrappy, isn't it? Referee's giving them a free kick there on the halfway line. Longstaff booked. Longstaff booked by Anthony Taylor. Fourth Newcastle player to go in the book. I'm surprised that he's not booked um, a substitute there. Came on Gomez for Wolves. As Longstaff's getting booked, he's waving a yes. fake yellow card in not there, which we do don't that. like to see. No, you're right. I don't right, think Paul. the referee's seen it. A couple of minutes to play. Still 2-2. Wolves 2, Newcastle 2. Free kick from Wolves. Lofted forward. Burn heads it away. Halfway line is Kilman to Doyle. Doyle's right-footed pass. Samedo stay forward. Now he's going to be quicker than Burn. Burn's just going to try and hold him off. Burn's done well to get his body in the way. He's got the last touch. Knocks it out for a Wolves throw. Some really tired Newcastle players out there. There is, you can see, really leggy. And Dan Burn there really had to dig deep to stop Samedo, but he did extremely well. Great defending. Minute and a half to go. Wolves attacking at Molyneux. Rain teaming down. Wolves 2, Newcastle 2. Wolves twice behind. Twice they've managed to peg Newcastle back. Kilman plays it back to Dawson. Wolves fans are a little disgruntled that it wasn't played forward. Then it goes forward from Dawson. Samedo jumps with Joa Linton. Joa Linton wins the header. Minute to play. Wolves throw on the right, but they are in absolutely no hurry to take it. No, there's a lot of positives that both managers can take from this. You know, both sets of players have dug deep and given a performance. And as you said, it's been a really, really good game of football. It's been an entertaining watch. We've had, it, we've had goals, we've had incident, and two sets of players that have given absolutely everything. Right, into the last minute of the game here. Rugby Union World Cup final on the way. Kicks off at 8 o'clock. Kalajic will chase a ball back to Nick Pope from Lascelles. Pope taking absolutely no chances. Clatters it downfield with his right foot. Dawson chests it down. Plays it to Totti on his left. Totti has to take a big bow for creating the Wolves. Second equaliser tonight. Offside against 8 Nuri. Streaking away down the left. Thought it might be the last chance in the game. But Newcastle will get the free kick. Yeah, ball over the top eight. No, he just missed times his run. He shouldn't because he's looking along the line. So free kick Newcastle. Wolves fans want it pushed back a little bit further than that. Last knockings of the game. Share on the ball inside his own half. My stopwatch tells me we've now played the eight minutes of added time. Anthony Taylor agrees. And the two teams share the spoils. Newcastle twice in front. Twice they were pegged back. It finished 2-2. Massive blow for Wolves, losing Neto to the hamstring injury in the second half. Paul Robinson, that will affect them going forward. But um, really, really enjoyed that. It was a fantastic game of football. Like I said there, just at the end of the game, two managers will be delighted what they've seen from their team. Both had a game plan. Both sets of players gave absolutely everything out there. Newcastle having played midweek against Dortmund, there's a lot of tired bodies out there. You can see the centre-halves, Dan Byrne, just got through. They, they had to dig deep. They had to go places where they train. That's what they train for. They train hard to get there. The Wolves players under Gary O'Neill, in different start to the season, but you can see that they've really turned a the corner. Two very, very good teams there and that was really enjoyable. 
Paul Robinson, thank you very much for your company uh, this evening. I'm sure you will hear Paul again soon on a Five Live football commentary, somewhere hopefully a little bit drier than Molyneux tonight. It has finished Wolves 2, Newcastle 2. Wolves move up a place in the Premier League table, above Crystal Palace on goal difference to 12th. Newcastle stays 6th. And if the Rugby Union World Cup final, Sonia McLaughlin is going to be played in conditions like this in the West Midlands this evening, it's going to be very challenging indeed. It has <laughs> not stopped raining all night. Yeah, we have a squall here as well. That could be a right old leveller, as they say, don't they? But the